You know, now that I think about it, why did they give Mike so much sexual energy in that movie? Mike from Monsters Incorporated? Yeah. What, you mean like how he's a big, like, he's round and curvy like a bull? He's a big testicle. He's always chatting up. He's a one-eyed monster. What's her name? Who's the Medusa ladies? She's such an unimportant when? character that I have no idea what her name is. The slug thing? No, no. The, one oh, he's talking about the lady I just shared, Celia. Yeah. Do you know that? Yeah, he's always, he's always hitting up Celia. He's always chatting up Roz. He's constantly banging his one testicle on things. Maybe it has something to do with who voice acts him. Who voice acts him? Billy Crystal. I don't know who that is. Hey, welcome to the Wesker Osley Podcast, joined by one and only Billy Crystal as Mike Kwiatkowski. Billy Crystal, not in attendance. Frequent yeah. host of Saturday Night Live. 73 years old. Dude, who hasn't hosted Saturday Night Live by this point? I've hosted Saturday Night Live at this point. <laughs> yeah, I watched all of your stuff. It's great. Well, they only let me on once. Possible. You were on the Will Smith episode where he was playing uh, Will in The Fresh Prince. How do you remember that? Everyone calls it the episode where that random guy beat up Conan O'Brien. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much the only Saturday Night Live thing I know is that it's gotten really bad, and, you know, the, the head bopping to what is love. It's been yeah. bad since fucking Eddie Murphy left, Jesus. It's been bad since John Belushi died. Is it, that's the guy with the funny name. How do you spell that? Yeah, the guy, the guy with the funny name. How do you spell <laughs> Belushi? B-E-L-U-S-H-I. May God rest his soul. I'm Wesker he died of He died of extreme drug abuse, so... And other than Pepsi Crystal, I am joined by three other fine gentlemen this evening. Could you introduce yourself, just gentlemen? Hi. That's Gay Robot? Yeah, I'm Bryce. with this oh. show since the beginning. I just don't do anything. Yeah, he usually works in the background, like like he flips some switches on the lights. Turn them on, and I can turn them off. Yeah. I like the Nosferatu act. Yeah, it's great. And I'm sorry, uh, who, who are you, little guy? Hi, uh, <laughs> I'm Brandon. Uh, and I just want to go ahead and... Uh, say that the lights have never been turned on around here in the Westerosity podcast room. And they never will be. Well, it's a good thing we're not paying you. So, I would like to start tonight's session by discussing a movie we all sat together to view, and that movie is Miami Connection. Not the remake, but the original from 1980-something. There is no remake. There is no remake? No. Oh, was there like a re-release? It was a re-release. Oh, okay. It's the same movie. Yeah, it was created by our god, Y.K. Kim, who is a Taekwondo master. And this is an independent martial arts film from 1987. And it yeah. is something else. And uh, do you want to talk about how you came across this video, Vice, or...? Uh, yeah, I don't. Okay. Well, I guess we won't talk about how you found it digging around in the garbage bin behind the local GameStop. And uh, we'll move on to other things about the movie. It's very uh, homoerotic, I think. It takes some. No one's hurt on in that. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's pretty, it's pretty great. The rock and roll, super cheesy and very bad, but it's got a lot of spunk, and it's it's a fun yeah. movie. You're really selling it to people who've never seen it. Yeah, I'm explaining everything about it, like the themes of of love and friendship and violence not being the answer. Except it was the answer to every single problem. Yes. A movie that's message is uh, anti-violence, but. Every single problem is solved by kicking the shit out of people. It is Mega Man X, like, the whole way through. It's pretty good. And the it's looming a, threat a of metaphor. ninjas the entire movie that don't show up until the last 15 minutes. Hey, they're in the first 15 minutes and the last 15 minutes. Well, I mean, they don't show up to the core cast. And they ride motorcycles. And there's this really... really gross, saggy, like, motorcycle, like, biker chick. Like, from the 50s. Ugh. This, this I thought entire... You liked <laughs> yeah, he loved it. He was all about mm, leather, uh, smoking, yeah. uh, crazy bar noise. Well, I did record all of that video for pleasure later, but, you know, like, my public face, I don't think I'm too much into it, you know? I don't think the smoking is very uh, very professional with those bikers. It kind of plays out, the entire movie is kind of like a video game, in the fact that it's just a bunch of disjointed scenes that make no sense, that string together fight scenes. Like Ride to Hell Retribution, yeah, like movie. Uh, we, keep, we kept bringing that game up, and it's like Ride to Hell meets Far Cry, Far Cry Blood Dragon. 
I still need to play That's Blood Dragon. perfect, actually. Which is hilarious, because the uh, end credits for Far Cry Blood Dragon uses a song from the Miami Connection. Oh, God. Yeah. Is it the one about friendship, or the one about... Yes. <laughs> no, um, it's it's the friendship one. Oh, my God. I was joking, but okay. No, I'm serious. That is actually the credits for Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. That's that's probably a perfectly fine Far Cry game for my first in the series, yeah. It's probably really disjointed to the others. I thought Far Cry was about, like, wait, which, what game is the one where uh, where you go around shooting everybody? Like all of them? Yeah, that's like all of them. Far Cry. Was Far, Far Cry, Cry 4 won. the one with the, the Far Cry the, 4 Indian had, like, guy? The, uh, yeah, the Indians and the gay dude. Okay, so it's the same series. Far he, Cry 5. What, was, was he gay? I think so. Um, he had a wife, though. A gay well, wife. That's what is Tom Cruise. Like, <laughs> they, they had Far Cry 1, which was... Yeah, that was back when those games were still good, and that was about, like... It was like a play on for bad spy movies where you're like uh, on a fucking island shooting mercenaries and mutant monkeys. Yeah, from what I uh, feel, it's very like it's there's like a bunch of skirmishing tactics. Yeah, Far Cry about. 2 was the best one and that was about just killing people in Africa and then, you know, Far Cry 3 and onward. Those need no uh, explanation. Wesker, how much visual editing are you going to do on this if any? I could add something in if you want me to. I want you to throw up the picture of the of the poster with the with the mailbox. Oh yeah. Remember this? Remember the mailbox? Oh, okay, yeah, alright. <laughs> God, I will zoom in right on that and I will show you this amazing action scene exhibited on the poster for the movie. Like look how amazing. You probably that is. explain the context of that mailbox. He gets a letter <laughs> that says that his dad is is in town. His dad that's been missing. And it's a really big deal, so they throw an explosion behind it. You Remember know. his character is uh he's his his mother was Korean and his dad was Black American. Yeah, that's how they worded it, right? Black American. That's exactly what he says. <laughs> yep, not African American, Black American. It's, it's also funny because the guy who shows up, his dad doesn't look like the guy in the photo. I can't remember the guy in the photo, but I'll try to find. He him. said things have changed. Me. See if I can. Yeah, find apparently him. a lot. Yeah. Yeah, he's gonna make it right. He even put on a new face. <laughs> yeah. Got some plastic surgery done with all that money he got from his dead wife. And uh, I'll say this about the movie. Y.K. Kim had a very loose grasp about how films work. And uh, he really wanted to push his whole Taekwondo shit. And that's why it, this is the coolest movie I've ever seen in my life. He had no grasp on filmmaking. I think he literally said in his interview he'd never even seen a movie before. Yeah, <laughs> that's what he had said. And that so other guy was uh, totally like, miserable. It's... it's <laughs> Please, link this in the description. Link the interview. Just watch this interview with YK Kim. Yeah. And watch the guy that we left. Just see see 10 minutes of existential pain. As he's remembering the process of the movie, he's realizing how much of a failure it was, and that's how all, that's all he's known for, is this movie. (laughs) Fucking dread that pours over his face when uh, YK Kim is talking about making another one. He's like, oh shit. (laughs) I'll be honest, I think he's deeply inspired me to run up to Florida and go take his Taekwondo classes because I took Taekwondo for two years and I didn't learn everything that the movie showed off. Did you learn how to do that awesome knife grab technique? <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't uh, it wasn't as heavily accepted by all my friends. That what about the toe sucking technique? Oh, no, not the toes. <laughs> yeah, I, I love the interview because if you watch any other interview about a movie... When there's people, when there are two people, and one of them is being spoken to, the other isn't. Both people will always be engaged, always be nodding, and and inter- and interacting with the interview. But in this interview, the guy on the left, he's staring at the floor, and off to the side, and just he clearly does not want to be there. Another... You can zoom in slowly on that guy's face and just play like fucking death <laughs> or something. <laughs> The interviewer just... himself is having a ton of fun, and he thinks it's hilarious, you can tell. And it's very, it's very awkward situation for all three of them to be in. I gotta say, you know, YK Kim, he strikes me as that guy who follows his dreams, no matter how stupid they sound. He also strikes me as someone who's entirely oblivious. Yeah, that too. The room. That, that too. Strikes me as an anime protagonist. Infinitely he better is. than Tommy Wiseau. I mean, someone did a comparison about how the Miami Connection and The Room are basically the same movie but one is good and one is bad did the room have ninjas in it no i want you to put on screen 
while you're editing this, the picture of uh, the foot in the guy's face. Okay, I'll have him sucking on the toe. Thank you. Um, I'll go ahead. Do you want me to read this YouTube comment comparing the room and Miami Connection? Feel free. All right, let me pull this up because it, it, he makes a good case. The Miami Connection, and this is from The Wasted You. I can't say this person's name. The Miami Connection is the room, but good. Both were made by immigrants with heavy accents, but enough grasp of the English language to write a script. Both had a creator who did not understand how movies were made and had never made a film before. Both had their creator both write the script, direct, and star. Both have one-dimensional protagonists who are persecuted by opponents with confusing motives. Both have side plots that go nowhere or resolve suddenly. Both have sudden, inconsistent tone shifts. Both have endings that come out of nowhere. Both completely flopped. The only difference is the motivation behind their creation, and this is the, this is what shines through. Tommy Wiseau wanted to make a film about how he felt personally betrayed by the success of his peers and the disrespect of his chosen craft, Johnny's banking compared to Tommy's acting. His motives were suspect, and you can tell with the sleazy feel of the entirety of the room. But YK Kim wanted to make a film about friendship and promote Taekwondo. His motives were pure. Ain't that the truth. Also, it has ninjas and catchy songs in it, and the room doesn't. If you guys want like a good movie to watch, uh, you can watch Karate Kid and then watch Cobra Kai afterwards. But it won't take place in Florida, which is the biggest draw here. Absolutely. We need more flow to Florida media, you know, especially, like, I know part six of JoJo's coming out that takes place, like, in Orlando, Kennedy Space Center, but I think we're going to use even more. I like how um, modern movies no longer touch Miami or anywhere else. They only touch the Space Center. Do they? Yeah, that Transformers movie was in Cape Canaveral. Wow, I didn't even know that. I don't know anything about movies because you know we live in a we live in a new dirty space age, but not the it's not as glamorous as the old one. Because everything else is dirty as fuck. We're trying to give STD to Mars. The shuttles, the phallus, covered in <laughs> disgusting space transmitted diseases. See yeah. the fifty space race was like, all right, we got to get out there because it's so good here and it's gonna get good out there. Now it's please God get me off this rock. <laughs> yeah. Now it's desperation. Instead First it was travel. Now it's escape. Yeah, I read an article recently saying how life that's on Mars now, that wasn't there before, we probably left it there. So we're just, like, cultivating new fucking horrible things over there, which is fun to think about. <laughs> Good. Cool. Gay Robot, you said earlier Far Cry 2 or 3 was about uh, killing people in Africa? 2, yeah. Yeah. Well, I wanted to say, speaking of killing people in Africa, recently, since the last podcast, I've managed to fully complete all of Resident Evil 5's achievements. And God, was that probably the worst waste of my time ever. I had to go online with a group that I found uh, through Steam forums and do matchmaking. And it was absolutely miserable. It took me nine hours of a day I had off. Probably ten, actually, now I think about it. To get all the grinding done as we were boosting each other. Not just playing legitimately, but boosting because the fucking online is dead. To get all the achievements for Versus and... We had to do the same thing for Team Versus, and on another day, I said, fuck it. I looked around, and there was, thankfully, a trainer, which allowed us to cheat. And in matches instantly, which made that 10 hours, 2 hours. So thank God for that. But I think Resident Evil 5 is getting to be, like, probably the best game I never want to play again. That's the best game you never want to play again? Probably. What would you think it was? I don't know. You played so many. Yeah. So many. So many bad games. That I enjoy, yeah. I think Resident Evil 5 is a good game, but man, my experience kind of got soured. And I had to run through the campaign two times before that, so... I don't think Resident Evil 5 is really fun to play as much as Resident Evil 4, so it just kind of burnt me out on that game. I don't know, man. Maybe it's as if wringing content out of games like water out of a sponge isn't exactly the best idea. It's true, yeah. It works in some cases, not in a lot of cases. I mean, in games, they're like, you know, really good on their own. Like, I imagine the Dead Rising achievement wasn't too bad. Yeah, well, that's, Dude, that's just a, a fun sandboxy game. Exactly. I feel like it's a lot easier on like sandboxy games. It, as a general rule, I'd say that's probably true. But I think Resident Evil Five just, I think it just kind of it drags on and gets repetitive really easily. It, the pacing isn't great. Uh huh. Like I could play Resident Evil Four back to back, and I did back when I was getting all those achievements. Like I think I played it three times in a row. One just has a victory lap because I want to play it more, but Resident Evil 5 is just... It's not Resident Evil 6 where it's like 99% action, but it's its like it's in between 4 and 6, like it's getting there. 
Right. And I shunted away Resident Evil 5, I've done with it for a long time, in preparation of another game, Resident Evil 8. That came out, and we played it some today. Was it today? I like how it's just Dark Souls. Yeah, it's Dark Souls, it's Bloodborne, it's, uh, it's Castlevania. So it's anything but Resident Evil is what you're talking It's like, about. let's take Resident Evil 4 and, uh, and make it Bloodborne. Yeah. And really... then we'll add Dark Souls bosses. <laughs> it's really weird. Um, I like how you were stuck on that one part. It was supposed to be a scripted death. Yeah, that was really weird. Okay, so so first off, I was streaming it for Vice, and Brandon joined in to watch later. I chose Hardcore because we're not pussies, so I I got through pretty pretty okay in the part where you don't fight anything, you just walk forward. I think that part was pretty easy, you know. No real challenge there. First enemy comes in, and I start dying. And part of it, sure, was dealing with the enemy himself, but... Another part was dealing with the immense lag that was caused for my recording, so you're going to see me here dying a lot probably in hardcore mode where I cut the footage off. Uh, I have more footage later from later in the game, and that's a lot smoother, and I'm actually playing the game on standard mode, but we'll get to that later. Yeah, uh, there's a point in that game at the beginning, kind of like Resident Evil 4's uh, village segment. With, where you It's exactly the- like Resident Evil 4's village segment. Yeah, I, I even called like, yeah, I'm going to meet a, a mini boss here, and... Lo and behold, there was that big guy with the hammer, which was, as you call, a Dark Souls boss, and he really does look like one. He absolutely looks like a Bloodborne boss. Yeah, he's just a big guy with a weapon, and there's even a guy, there's a machinist guy, I can't remember his name, that you meet later, one of the villains, one of the four lords, and he's, he's, he's just a fucking anime character with Bloodborne gear. Like he, I could have sworn he had the fucking Hunter's Axe, or the Boom Hammer, rather. But that there's a part where, yeah, you keep getting attacked by enemies, and I got really frustrated on hardcore mode, and Brandon was looking into it for me because, like, we tried a lot of different things to get through that part. I was going to joke that it was going to be like the uh, village fight in Resident Evil 4 where you're just supposed to run down the clock, yeah, but I felt that that would be way too, like, that would be way too uh, derivative. Yeah, but no. Um, what happened was... I, I got shot in the leg randomly by by a, an arrow, and then cutscene happened, and then I was in the next area. And I don't know if it was because I did enough. This is when I restarted on standard because I actually wanted to enjoy the game my first play time, first playthrough. I decided. I don't know if it was because I caused enough damage on that mini boss, the Dark Souls boss guy, or if it was because I was just surviving long enough. So I didn't kill many of the uh, basic guys. I think you had to be in a particular spot for the cutscene to trigger. That is really bad design. If that's when I was watching the walk, well, you have to be in front of the guy. When I was watching the walkthrough, uh, he didn't even shoot the guy with the hammer. It's just when he was around the guy with the hammer, then he was in a position for the cutscene to start happening. I fought him for a while. Like I, like I wasted all my shotgun shells on him. And then the he restarted before his animation finished. Well. Yeah, I was really upset because I thought like I was actually beating that mo- that part on hardcore, uh, because apparently you're supposed to get like a a false fail in that part. But no, it's like a different animation. Like you you get shot in the leg and you go down. Like you don't get attacked by an enemy. Like it's not you getting it's not you fighting an enemy directly hand to hand, which was happening to me because I was dying. Games are cinematic. And it's gotta... getting real fucking confusing how cinematic cinematic they are. Yeah. To a fault. Yeah, I agree. To a fault. I like games being video games. Like, I like them looking pretty and shit, but I like some movies. It's a, I'm not that. I'm a big movie guy. It was exactly like in Mega Man X1, where you're supposed to lose the, the first boss, you see. Can so. you actually beat that one? No. No? Okay. <laughs> Alright, but in Mega Man X1, you lose the first... It's the first time... Like, it's not against regular enemies, you know? I, I just kept dying to regular enemies, and like, for Resident Evil 8... He's running around in circles like an asshole. It's definitely, it was definitely confusing, but I can see where it's coming from. It's I still just, don't know, uh, I, don't, I still don't know exactly what I did to trigger it, the next like, part. They put you in this nice big area to explore and like run the controls and interactive things and pick up collectibles, but it's kind of, I can understand how frustrated it could have been to not know how it was going to play out next. And I, Vice pointed out that, yeah, I'm terrible in, with directions and I get lost easily in games. Yeah. It's very bad for you in this game because, like I said, there's a problem with video games now where the yes. backgrounds and foregrounds are both in high fidelity, so they blur together, 
and it's really easy to get disorientated if you're not good at that stuff. I'm good at navigation, but Wesker Wesker gets a loss because everything looks the same. Yeah, and like especially in this game because it, it not only is it first person, but it tries to make you feel claustrophobic. Like everything is packed in closely, so everything looks the same and everything is just tightly packed in. But there's still like plenty of level, like in these like narrow tubing and like. Shit is just tucked away off to the side where you could easily miss it if you're not looking there or at the map. And, and you already developed this horrible bad habit because every time you get kept running down that uh, down that dead end path to get the handgun ammo and just kept getting cornered. Yeah. On the contrary, standard mode or whatever it's called, the normal difficulty is pretty damn easy. Like I haven't died yet in it. Oh, it's one of those difficulty curves. Yeah, it's like... Let me guess. The easy mode is like, you basically can't die. Standard is like, if you can play video games, you're fine. Yeah, it's fine. And hardcore <laughs> is like, you have to pray. Yeah, it, standard to hardcore is, alright, you want to learn the game, like, for playing it on a higher different difficulty and not die? Here you go. While well, hardcore is just kiss your ass goodbye. I think you could give a hardcore another go. Uh, I will. Already too. When I beat the game, I will. I don't want to restart my playthrough right now. I just want to enjoy the game. You can't have two save files. I don't know. I probably can. I found a typewriter, and yeah, it let me do, like, save slots, but... I don't like playing, like, multiple playthroughs at the same time. I like to beat the game and, like, do another circuit. Otherwise, I might get confused, because, you know, I have limited RAM in my big brain. My tiny brain. But... You know, after that, all that really happened was, uh, after that part, kind of like this weird scripted segment, and I kind of went about half an hour without seeing an enemy, actually. And immediately after that, like, even though it's called Resi Volate Village, I got shunted off to the castle, and I think I'm almost done with the castle now. Yeah, it's Castlevania. You're in Dracula's castle. And, uh, I'll update my thoughts on that game, like, later on, but... Uh, say hi to them for me, too. I will, I will. I'll say hi to plenty of people. The ladies are very nice. You'll see some footage of the castle some gameplay and the video around now the merchant is really came out of left field and i think it fits in the game though yeah well he comes out of left field in resident evil 4 too and this is just resident evil 4 remake yeah do you, do you know about the merchant in resident evil 8 vice no do you, would you like to know? don't spoil me okay are you gonna download the game and play it yourself maybe all right. It's not very scary. I, I'm no longer scared by video games. I, I, I turned 16 a few years ago. Oh, uh, all right then. I'm still waiting for my 16th birthday. A grown man waiting to become a man. Huh. A man-child, if you will. Just like Chris Chan. Whoopee! <laughs> oh, wow, cool. Village is on Family Share. Yeah. Nice. If we ever get Chris Chan on the podcast, I'd be happy. As I continue to leech off of Wesker's charity. Enjoy it. What's really cool is there is... Yeah, it's it's just Resident Evil 4, man. You can tune up your weapon. You can buy more fucking space for your stupid attaché case, which isn't even useful in this game because the stuff you craft to make stuff, it doesn't take up inventory space. You can just keep getting more and more. It is so painfully deliberate that there is no doubt that there can be no yeah. contention it's or, or dispute. It's how dissimilar it is. The only thing that is not from Resident Evil 4 is that goddamn bolt cutter model that they've been reusing for every single game <laughs> yeah. since the demo of, of, of 7. I will say uh, I am really enjoying this castle segment, though. It's not, like, super big, like, fortress castle, like Resident Evil 4 had the castle. But this one is more, uh, it's kind of classier. It's like a chateau. Right. What, what do you think is... Why... Number one, why can't Ethan catch a break with his hands? And number two, why does he can't why can't he catch a break with uh, leaky faucets? I think because he's in hell right now. I think this is just you know like out in hell, it's like suffering on repeat. This is just his. Oh, life. so he has some kind of Promethean nightmare he's in, where he constantly has to go through these torments. Yeah, he's chained with down. With Silent Hill. Yeah. I was I was actually watching a fucking lore video on Halo and fucking. Goddamn Dante's Inferno came up in some poem from the Cold War. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not even joking. Like, got weird. Oh, it, it got, Master it got Chief's journey. Wait, are we talking about the perspective of uh, the Arbiter or Master Chief? ODST. Oh, never mind. God, and I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure, like, the poem is pretty well known. What is it? Uh, it's like Stone Men or Hard Men or... Hard Men? Yeah. The Hollow Ed, Men? Yeah, the Ed Hollow Men. Men? The Hollow Men, yeah. That's my favorite poem. Yeah, well, ODST is loosely based off of that. Oh, could have fooled me. Yeah. Appar well, 
they took inspiration from it. I don't think it's really, you know, I don't think the story is, is tied to it, but the general, you know, the general theme or the feel or I don't know. I, I haven't finished the video yet. I'm just kind of talking out of my ass and I don't really know the full connection. Aren't you always? Yeah. Back on the Castlevania comparison. I want to stop talking about Resident Evil because I'm getting sick of it. But yeah, I was talking out of my ass, but uh, is that a segue? We'll crack your whip and start talking out of your goddamn booty, son, because you're going to jump over that cliff and you're not going to be able to control your midair movement. <laughs> Castlevania time. That's a Dracula. That's what he sounds like. Uh, I've been playing some Castlevania recently. I played one, played two, three, and four. Super four. Super Castlevania four. That's my favorite so far. I haven't moved on to like Rondo of Blood. Like I said, I would because I'm taking my time. Four was so good though. Uh, one is okay. I really like one. It went from taking me like six hours to beat it the first time to taking one hour to beat it again, you just really because. Ran through the game that fast. Yeah. It's pretty good. It's pretty satisfying until you get past uh, level 18, which is where the uh, new game plus starts. Yeah. Hold, and new hold, game plus. Yeah. Hold, hold your horses for a second, Brandon, before we get into the nitty gritty. I just want to give some premise here. So, Gay Robot brought up Castlevania at one point. I can't remember why or when. or Because I bought it because it was on sale. I yeah. bought it and the original Rogue on Steam. He was me He's been meaning to play Castlevania 1 for the longest time. And I was also looking to play it some myself. I wanted to start to play maybe almost every major installment in the series. And Brandon was also looking at it, so we all found ourselves in a situation where, hey, let's play some Castlevania. And hilariously enough, the person to bring it up, Gay Robot, was having a bit of an opposite reaction than to Brandon. Well, yeah, Gay Robot is neither undead or immortal, so I can understand where he's coming from where he didn't quite vibe with Castlevania. Since he's a gay robot. Yeah, it's true. He is kind of off-brand for the series. I enjoyed my time. Castlevania is a series I've heard about for the long time from Ego Warrior and AVGN and video gamers on the interwebs. I like how it's just you know an action platformer where the weapons that the, it gives you multiple weapons and the weapons are like specifically useful for something when you get them. So it feels uh pretty good when you like utilize them correctly like it feels like you're using your tools to handle the situation before you. exactly like it gives you an axe you can assume there's going to be like a vertical section or a flying enemy it gives you a holy water you can just assume that you can kill anything and be god you, you have the cross the cross is just good for like i don't know taking up screen space i want to say it's a game where it deliberately makes you feel underpowered but gives you just enough where you can learn the game, and from learning how to handle every situation, you feel like you're actually have become your own sort of vampire hunter, and you've learned what you gotta learn, and now you're skilled enough to take it all on. You're just human, but you know your tactics and cunning went out over the stuff with the better abilities. I mentioned before how the first boss just becomes like a regular enemy at around the end, and also, there's the new game plus that it just throws you into. I was I was saying how that kind of reminded me of Dark Souls a little bit. When you go <laughs> into new game plus, it's basically just Dark Souls on Nintendo Entertainment System. Kind of feels it's like kind of Dark Souls, you know. Kind of, kind of. Kind of Devil May Cry. Kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of like Halo. Kind of like every Japanese horror theme mangled together in. Also, movie tropes, like Dracula. I've actually, even though the Dark Souls thing is like a stupid meme, I have actually compared Dark Souls to Castlevania before, because both games are about wind-up time and cool-down time with all your attacks and all your movements, for the most part. Like, you gotta, like, think about yeah. what each move you, you make costs. Like, standing still is a viable strategy. Like, waiting for the thing to, you know, come range of you dodging it or attacking it you like kind of have to make a decision you can't just like go ham towards it and expect it to work out you can't spaz out like a little fucking bastard so as far as new game plus goes i'm not gonna finish it i got like the stage 24 uh they put medusa heads in places where there weren't medusa heads before and they spawn faster so you'll end up seeing like two of them on screen all the time closer range of each other i'm just like it took me like a little over an hour to be castlevania one and it took me and I've been stuck on one part for like two hours in New Game Plus. Castlevania 2, it's an easy game. You just gotta, you gotta know where to go. 
and you got to know how to grind. Yeah, you got to buy your Nintendo Power. You do have to kind of you kind of understand. The game lies to you. you. It, 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 it does lie to you. The hints lie to you. Like it'll it's, tell you one place, and it's actually in an entirely different place. And I don't really blame the game that much. It's very poorly translated, which is why it seems like the NPCs are going out of their way to tell you something very that shit crazy. I want to or... mention something about the poorly translated. I know that uh, I know that's a problem with Zelda 2. I want to say that maybe it's not even the translation that's the issue, but the limited space. Because, you know, Japanese characters, they take a lot less room than, uh, you know, English letters. Yeah, like when I was looking at the original translation of what it was supposed to say, it turned into a lot of English text that would have never fit on in that box. Yeah, that's the first thing I noticed when you sent that. So I think, I, I don't know, part of it might have been like bad translation. I think a lot of it, though, was just people trying to make do with the limitations at the time for the English speaking audience. It's kind of sad that that kind of game won't see a remake, even though it kind of, it's not like the grandfather of uh, Metroidvania or Egovania, whatever. I will strangle you. <laughs> whatever the fuck people like to call it, because it's just like oh, people grinding like to call it that. and NPCs hey, and hey, hey, you going your yeah. fetch quests. What's the last Mario like you played? Uh, the last Mario like I played uh, Sonic. You played Sonic recently. That's a Mario like. Yeah. What do you mean I played Sonic recently? What are you talking about? When I played. What's Sonic the last recently? Doom Nukem like you play? You mean a Doom like? Yeah, yeah you play you know, Halo. You know that, those. You, you know you, you say that vice, but they're actually called Doom clones. You know. Isn't that what they used to be called? Yeah. Yeah, that was an old ass term. That's a long time ago. As far as I'm concerned, they're all still Doom clones. Fuck them. Yeah, it's a uh, like it. I kind of feel it kind of feels weird knowing uh, what I know now about like uh, what Symphony of the Night is going to be like. I haven't started it yet, but uh, I've seen plenty of stuff about it and how different it'll be from from me going from Castlevania Four, which is fucking fantastic. It and... starts off super cool. Does anyone mind spoilers for like the first gameplay segment after the whole I Die don't. Monster segment where you play as Alley Card? Do you mind spoilers, Brandon? Yes. Okay, never mind. <laughs> But uh, the most you can say about Symphony of Night is how there's just a gigantic map system, and you're just going to be in the castle. That kind of depresses me a little bit. I guess there's no bottomless pits, right? Like, if you fall in a pit, it's just going to be into a different area of the castle. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. I think it's all just... Uh, I think you can only die from enemies, or spikes, maybe. I've only played in maybe two hours of Symphony of the Night so far, but I definitely plan to get really big on it once I get to it, as I play the games on release order gradually. Because I played the shit out of Curse of the Moon and Curse of the Moon 2 and uh, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. I got all achievements in all three of those games, and they were really great experiences, and I recommend those games. Vice, I know you just kind of had a thing about me saying Metroidvania. You don't mind Egovania as a term, do you? I don't know what that is. (laughs) It's because... um, Egovania is... is, Ega is the last name of the guy who made the series. Of like Symphony of the Night going onward. It's just me being pedantic. I don't like I don't like defining games by other games. I think me neither. Really lazy like, buzzword. I think it's really, really lazy. I think that's the only reason like like people are calling it Egovania like more so these days, because they don't want to draw comparisons because nowadays there's a ton of like indie games that have like you know, a gigantic map system where you can kind of play it out of order a little bit, find upgrades everywhere. It, it just makes more sense to, like, the direction of the series started with a particular entry. You can just kind of, you can kind of say what it is without comparing it to another game because there are more Castlevania games than Metroid games. That's for sure. You know, that's a, you know, even though, like, I would prefer them to not use the term, I have to admit that, uh, something in the night in Metroid are really fucking similar, like, in, in terms of structure and design. Even though there are massive differences, the, the core is very similar. So I can see why people say it, but I feel like when people say Metroidvania, I feel like they're pigeonholing these games into being like a set of things that have all these expectations and molds that they can't break out of. And when that happens, yeah. stuff gets stale and boring, and you've seen it all before. See, what gets, it gets on my nerves, especially because Metroidvania isn't as bad to me as roguelike, yeah. uh, if it's you're familiar with God. Rogue. Yeah, I literally bought it on Steam and played it recently. Yeah. I have a feeling most people who have heard that term have never even heard of the game Rogue. When people yeah, say they, rogue they probably like don't even know Rogue like me. Yeah, they just think it's, oh, it's just permadeath, even though there was a lot more going into that game. But no, like, yeah. what do I know? Bullets. I only played it. Yeah, like, I hadn't heard of Rogue until, generation. like, uh, it was in a separate conversation I was having with somebody, like, 
this year that somebody told me what Rogue was. Yeah, that was me. Couldn't have been. <laughs> For you. Okay, well, let's pretend that uh, I had a, a secret friend that told me about it sooner. I mean, not sooner, later. I wouldn't believe you, but okay. <laughs> the wor- world's worst kept secret, I have no friends. Castle 82, uh, pretty pretty easy. I okay, think AVGN okay, so kind of, yeah. There are- yeah. Wait, 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 hold on. I have to say something. Yeah. So, so roguelike. A game is a roguelike, uh, as far as I, as far as I understand, people use the term for games that are procedurally generated and feature permadeath. Exactly. That's what I was so, do you know what qualifies as a roguelike under that term? What? Under that definition? Fucking Minecraft. <laughs> it, it is because that's large. You're not wrong. Game. So does Terraria. <laughs> a thoughtful uh, roguelike. Minecraft's a roguelike, everybody. You know, the worst part is people would probably seriously agree with you. It's just like how uh, The Wizard of Oz is an isekai, and so is Dead Money. (laughs) Samurai Jack is an isekai. You get isekai so hard in Dead Money. That that fucking... I I, I literally... I woke up from a nightmare in sweat, (laughs) and the first thought in my mind was, Dead Money's an isekai. That That that, actually happened. I've been getting these fucking advertisements about this movie, right? It's about a guy who, like, dies every day, like Groundhog's Day or something. Yeah. But all I could think of was just fucking anime that have done this. And I'm thinking, like, I, I, like it's not exactly a new idea. But because it's so popular in Japan right now, I'm thinking, is is this, is there, is, did some, like, American fucking shit boy, did he fucking, is he watching too much anime? And is he trying to make that into a hard, grizzled action movie with Action Man? Is this what's happening? That's happened a lot in the past. Remember Pacific Rim? Remember the Matrix? The Matrix. Just about to say that, yeah. But what specific room exactly based it's on? It's about giant robots, but it's, it's really It's uh, mainly based on Pat Labor, which was, or Pat Labar, whatever the fuck it's called, which was a very old school mech series. Oh, damn. I don't, never even heard of that. Oh, I thought it was kind of trying to be its own thing, but now, it's, now that I, uh, you're telling No, they literally I, cited it as their uh, inspiration. Mm. It's specifically mechs versus kaiju in that movie. Okay, well now I have like less good things to say about because I think uh, Pacific Rim is kind of boring. <laughs> it was like one of the last movies I saw in theaters, which you know a long time ago, so that says a lot. I thought it was pretty entertaining. Like I didn't love it, but I liked the action scenes. It was no Miami Connection. Yeah, that's just... for sure. There weren't enough ninjas or friendship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And while we're still in Castlevania, another game that I think was super, super Castlevania is Bloodborne. Because you mentioned Dark Souls, but Bloodborne is Super Castlevania. It's got everything. It's got the castles. It's got the moon. It's got the fucking, rally system. Yeah, it's got the rally system. It's got a fucking. <laughs> it's got a chain whip as a starting weapon. I mean, you have a leather whip, and then you upgrade to the chain. Whip. No, well, I mean, in Castlevania, yeah, but no. Yeah. And, and it, and I think because I played Bloodborne first, that was where I made the connection that like. I thought it was pretty clear to clear as day to me that the guys who made the Souls games were directly inspired from old school Castlevania. Yeah, I mean, they were inspired only by Berserk. Only by Berserk. Only yeah. by that, Berserk. Oh, they and, actually uh, cite that as like their inspiration. And uh, a- HP Minecraft. The Berserk inspirations are kind of, <laughs> HP kind of, Minecraft. Like the... They straight up have the Golden Age uh, sword from Berserk, which is fiction, which is just from Berserk. It's not a real sword, but the Great Sword in Dark Souls One. It's just a sword guts had for a long time. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the description for the great axe in Dark Souls 3 is the same description for Guts' sword. I didn't know about that. But... Yeah. They'd say it's too too thick to even be called a sword. That kind of shit. They say it's too big. It's just a, a heap of raw iron. Oh, God. Okay. Which is too... It's too deliberate not to be a Berserk reference. Yeah. And that's cool because Dark Souls is going to be the best Berserk game we will ever have. Yeah. But you were going through the series, Brandon. Uh, do you want to talk about Castlevania 3, which is the one I grew up with the most when I was a child? Yeah, I'm done with 2. Okay, so Castlevania 3, that was... It made me very angry. So hard. <laughs> oh, God. And I was playing it without a guide. I didn't realize the partner characters were missable yeah. if you didn't go like the correct route. So I got very lucky when I picked the routes just by randomly, you know, just based off preference. Uh, by the the wind off my dick, and I found uh, Grant the Nasty, and I had him for a while. I'm like, all right, this is cool. I like him. He can control his jump trajectory. He can he can cut people and get hit a lot. That's cool. Then I got Alucard. Thankfully, I got Alucard. I wanted him the most because I like him uh, as a character. I was watching a lot of the the Castlevania animated series on Netflix, which is 
it's based on Castlevania three, uh, kind of loosely because you know it's a lot of fucking characters. There's not much story uh, going on in an NES game. If Grant showed up in that uh, Castlevania uh, Netflix series, I didn't see him. Oh, but wow. Sypha and Alucard and Trevor were all big players in that. Alucard's kind of cool. So I got him. It was a lot different than what I'm used to in the modern adaptation. Yeah, he looks he like did... a fucking skinny ass nerd in the original. Movie. <laughs> yeah, it does. All are the glasses, the push up on his nose. Uh, real quick before we we go, keep going. I forgot I was gonna say something earlier. But in Castlevania Two, people can say what they want about that game. I haven't played it yet myself, but two things that are great that came out of that game: Bloody Tears and also the Dracula sprite for the final boss. You say that fight sucks, and it does suck, but I think it looks Did so I say cool. that? Yeah, because it's nothing. You don't fight anything. You just kill them. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, then let the record show that I'm saying it. Yes. It, it did suck, like, big dick. Uh, well, all the boss fights suck dick. His corpse bound up, and it's, like, fucking 20 feet tall, and it's, like, this black shroud with, like, a death mask on it. It's super awesome. It looks great for an NES game. I love that sprite. I'll put it on screen here. Castlevania 2, uh, it had three boss fights, if I recall correctly. They were very simple, which it was kind of a relief because Castlevania 1 had really hard boss fights to where if you didn't play out the fight exactly the way the game wanted you to, then you just weren't going to win. Uh, you, like, you could just have a starting disadvantage, and that, that, that's all it is. Uh, Castlevania 2, you can actually walk past any of the three bosses, well, except for Dracula himself. Not all the clearable dungeons have bosses. And the the ones that aren't Dracula felt optional, and there's just a very easy way to cheese Dracula with the holy water at the end of Castlevania too. So he did. It's not the most rewarding boss fights in the world. It was definitely an ambitious game, though, considering all the tried. Yeah, you can respawn from where you died. That's kind of cool. You can level up, but not in the same uh, area of progression twice. So you had to actually move forward before you can uh, level up again. Although uh, the game punishes you for taking too long by giving you a bad ending, which is awesome. Even though the good ending doesn't make any goddamn sense. Because <laughs> the good ending is where Simon and Dracula are both alive. And Simon's curse is broken. Even though that was... I, I don't know. Gossipania 3 has a lot of instant death scenarios. That are just very deliberate and kind of cheap and kind of annoying. And depending on what routes you choose, depends on how hard the game actually gets. Stage 7 is a gauntlet. Where you just have to fight like three bosses, and getting there is the fucking is half the battle. All right, but that forest level with the jellyfish is cool, and I have a lot of nostalgia for it. All right, yeah, there's a lot of cool set pieces and levels, and I like uh, the levels that are just like the floor is building itself, or the floor is like, or, or blocks in the room are deteriorating, or uh, I like the gears how they're spinning as you're jumping on them, so you kind of have to. Even though like a uh, the jumping is still stilted uh, as a uh, Trevor Belmont, you, you can still kind of do some cool parkour shit as parkour as it gets for that kind of game i didn't get cypher because i didn't i didn't know i could miss miss out on some they sweet ass cypher you can only have one care uh, other character at one time. yeah but it's just like it's progression based so it goes from grant to alucard to cypher and i just skipped Cypha. i was gonna try them all out but i just ended up with alucard for the longest time until the very end of the game which is which is good i got the bro ending yeah you Got so many different endings for an NES game. It's pretty nuts. Alucard can turn into a bat and fly. The consumer parts, and that saved my ass a lot. It helps you bypass some stuff that was just, like, not on the table for me. And it didn't feel too broken. It just... Because I felt like I could have handled this part on my own. I just, uh... I wanted to fight the fucking boss. All right, Brandon. But how about that Castlevania 4? Probably one of the best games I've ever played. Like, you can aim the whip, and you can control your, your character in the air the like it's an early super nintendo game but all the levels are really well designed uh you got them slopes you got uh more shit to destroy with your whip you can dangle it it's got weird ass physics that's that's cool it helps you kill bats kind of the bosses all feel very balanced and it doesn't st start you off in a situation to where you'll immediately get fucked over if you're staying in the wrong position in the boss fight room they telegraph what they're gonna do and you can just get a good rhythm going to fight him, so it's just not but It's not like button mashing, and it, it's not like... There's wiggle room to actually fight these bosses and not feel like you're locked on a rail to actually survive. It, it, felt, it felt like a, like a fun action platform game. It's, a, it's an encounter where you have time to think on your feet a bit instead of having to just lock into a pattern, I get you. Yeah, there is some instant death bullshit in Super Castlevania 4, especially at around the end, where it gets super wild. 
don't know. It wasn't like you have a lot more control over your character. The bosses are really fun to fight. The stages look really nice. There's fucking slopes. I like slopes. I like the treasure room. I like the everything's all shiny and cool. And there's uh, those dancing ghosts that are ballroom dancing. Everything's really memorable. Yeah, I don't want to say too much more else. All right, then. So we talked a lot about Castlevania now. It's a great series. I want to really get into it more myself. I'm going to play through the NES games myself. Probably been looking at some really shitty gameplay of me going back to it. Uh, the Medusa heads were fucking me up when I recorded that, sad to say, but what can you do? You gotta relearn the game. I remember Castlevania 1 from when I was a child as well. Didn't play as much as 3, but still played it. But, as we said before, Gay Robot was not really feeling Castlevania, were you? No, I th- and I really wanted to like it. I like it. I played the first one, for the record. Or I played m- some of it, and then I just quit. But I really liked the style of it, the Halloween aesthetic, and all the horror movie monsters that were in there. I thought that was really cool. But it was way too slow, way too fucking finicky, and I was just bored stiff by it. Yeah, so uh, you kind of looked for different places to... Maybe yeah, I this. ended up looking at a entirely different game called Ninja Gaiden. I was playing the SNES version of that because I was already eyeing the series. The 3D games were coming out on that remaster. Yep. And I actually really enjoyed Ninja Gaiden, despite it being a horrible, <laughs> horribly grating experience. <laughs> I, would equ- I would equate Ninja Gaiden to Everywhere at the End of Time. For anyone who's not familiar with that, it was like a, a series of six conceptual albums that depict the slow <laughs> degradation of the mind as you slip into dementia. It's kind of like that for Ninja Gaiden. Because, but you also have to be really good at a video game, too, at the same time. You have to be kind of lucky, too. I say kind of lucky, like a lot lucky in some of the areas. Uh, so, like, you got stage one of Ninja Gaiden. I would call this the pre-awareness stage. This is where the game's kind of easy. It's... You know, it's whatever. You heard it was kind of hard, so you're like, oh, I'm going to go play it. You don't know to the extent of the madness you are about to experience. And it's fine. That level is really fucking easy. Stage a, two, it... Yeah? I was going to say, it's it's a false sense of security. It is. It lulls you in. And then stage two happens, and it's not as bad, or it's not that bad, but it ramps it up a bit. You might die here. You might actually unironically die here. Is that the one with the cliffs we were talking yeah, about earlier? Yeah. Yeah, that one's got the cliffs. Yeah, um, that's as far as I got when I checked it out several years back, out of curiosity. I wasn't really looking to beat it, I was just looking to play it. Mm-hmm. But yeah. That's the one where you start running into like the ranged enemies that are constantly throwing knives at you and Actually, knocking you all over the that, place. I got to the sewers. I remember oh, you got the sewers. To... Okay. Okay. I, I think I know where that is. I think that's like... It's probably the third level. Yeah. Did you... Well, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute and we'll see if we can figure out where you were yeah and then the second boss of that again is really easy it's not that hard you might die on him a couple of times so you try to figure him out but so long as you know how to wall climb and you know cancel slash up until that point then you're, you're you're pretty good even if you don't know that stuff you can survive relatively easily then stage three happens and now it's getting a bit spicy you've got the birds that are constantly a fucking pain in your ass because they'll spawn in and then they'll circle back and chase you around and they're fucking impossible to hit. I swear to God, you know, you play this game, you're gonna want to kill every fucking bird. Every Birds and video games, it. man. Like, you're gonna fucking about... see a pigeon bathing in a fucking fountain and you're gonna want to kill it because it's you or that pigeon, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you are the ninja know. Gaiden. I'm gonna have my fucking my whip. I'm gonna have my ninja sword and I'm gonna use my taekwondo to kill those fucking birds. But ultimately, ultimately though, through the elimination of violence, can we achieve world peace? I'd say it's if you're going to rage quit in this game, it's going to be stage three. Because if you get to stage four, you're going to be a little bit too dedicated, I feel, to want to stop. You see that and stage four is where it starts kill to... Kill it before it kills you. To, yeah, pretty much. Stage four is a little bit more manic. Let me see if I can pull up this Let's walk through real quick, jog my memory of it. Ninja Gaiden, I think I'm going to play... I think I'm going to play a bit. Probably not going to get too far, but, you know, I feel like throwing up some gameplay just so people can see about oh, how yeah, it that's... gets. I'll probably finish the whole trilogy. So this is the jungle. I think you encounter the axe guys here, which are fucking assholes. Next to the birds, they're probably the worst fucking enemy because you can't counter them in any possible way. They sound really they constant... <laughs> you can um, You can throw a shuriken, if you have one, at at them and they'll it'll break their axe but literally as soon as you're able to attack again they're already throwing another axe and it you can't 
pass through that. You can't just like attack once and then it also kills the guy. <laughs> you know, your 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 shuriken breaks when it hits the fucking axe. So those guys are kind of assholes. There's some really cheap fucking jumps here. There are a lot of fucking birds. There are a lot of bats, and it's not fun. Well, it's kind of fun, but you know, you know, it's um. <laughs> this fearing. guy kind of has like a different vibe in Castlevania, to where Castlevania sometimes you have to wait the enemy to telegraph what you can do against it. Ninja guy, you kind of just had to fucking run away from everybody. And it, it's good that you bring that up because the the only real strategy in these stages is it's just fucking run, and I like that a lot about Ninja Gaiden was because it was fast paced. That's what ninjas do. It was do, exactly what I wanted to wanted from a uh, a side pla or like a side scrolling platformer thing. Are there motorcycles in Ninja Gaiden? Yeah, how about, about the palm trees? I don't remember those. Ninja Gaiden. Um, and there weren't any motorcycles in the first game from what I remember. It was like axe dudes, birds, football players, dudes with machine guns, everything. Does Gear Robot not understand what we're saying here? Probably not. Oh shit, yeah, that movie. <laughs> that fucking Piece of shit movie. Yeah. Okay. Have really um, cheesy rock I think I skipped that stage. Actually, are there know. songs about friendship in Ninja Gaiden? Brandon, do you mind yeah. uh, Ninja Gaiden spoilers for the, the first game? I don't mind Ninja Gaiden spoilers. For some reason, I feel like that that game story isn't going to matter as much to me as the game. Okay. Goes. Well, at the well, Ninja Gaiden doesn't have motorcycles or palm trees, but at the very end, it has an alien demon. It also has actual cutscenes and shit. But, yeah, yeah, and you're like. Don't you save the president of the United States? Is that bad dudes? It's probably also that's bad. That's bad dudes. That's bad dudes. That's bad dudes. But don't you do something like that? You save an American guy. Yeah, it takes place you in do. America. You something. save an American like CIA. Wait trade. a minute, Fuck hold later. on. Yeah, it's a Japanese game about a ninja. It takes place in America. Does this mean that Resident Evil Four is the sequel to Bad Dudes? Yes. You're, are you a bad enough dude to save Ashley Graham? Damn. Good yeah, Lord. stage four is horse shit. Stage five, this is where this is the uh, the post awareness stage. This is where we get into the real shit. This is where all <laughs> semblance of casual gaming has left your mind, and the only thing you can focus on is beating this stupid fucking game. You have ascended at this point. You have well, you haven't yet. You that comes later. Sounds like the game, Dark Souls two. The game has ascended. <laughs> The game just powered up into its new form. It's fucking a stage bullshit. of complete demise for the protagonist. I mean, it just completely loses its fucking marbles here. There are ridiculous Despair. fucking jumps where you have to, like, you have to wall climb down while fucking birds are spawning on top of you. It, it, it's just fucking insane. Spawning on top of you? <laughs> they, they, they were, there's one jump oh, God. towards the end where you have to angle yourself just the right way so that the bird doesn't spawn and you have to wall climb down and he'll he'll spawn once you get to a certain point and if you're on the ledge still you're probably going to you're not probably you're going to fucking die so that's you're gonna do a lot of trial and error there you think ninjas play this game i think they do that for training i think you know feudal japan this was their their training sim it's the training for a ninja seal yeah <laughs> just like the simulators the boss on, on this one is not that hard, despite what some people might say. You know, you just gotta try to kill him before he kills you, like all the others, mm -hmm. and you're gonna die a lot. Stage 6 happens. You are so far beyond the point of no return here, it's it's insane. It's, it's f fucking crazy, because it starts out really calm. Yeah. It's not frantic at all, you're just running for a solid, like, few seconds, right? And just enough to lull you back into that false sense of security, you almost remember what the first level was like. You almost remember what it's like to play a video game and not suffer. Yeah, and then all of a sudden you see like one dude with a machine gun, you head over to him to kill him or jump over him, whatever you want to do. Or press up and then all of a sudden, him. like five other enemies spawn on your screen and you're just being constantly fucking bombarded. Every spawn in this fucking level, one of those un uh, recurring spawns, they just, if you kill one, another one spawns immediately. The only thing you can do is fucking run and pray. You're going to be on this level a lot, because you're going to die a lot. And there's one fucking jump here, too, towards the second stage, or the second part of that stage, where you have to jump on a very narrow platform where only one person can, like, fit on. And there's another one exactly like it, just barely off screen. And there's a fucking knife-throwing dude who spawns there, and the minute you jump on to uh, try to kill him, a bird spawns on top of him. It almost seems impossible. What you actually have to do here is kind of cheese it a bit where you, you use the frames against them you start out on the very edge of that platform and slowly inch your way forward so that the green guy with the fucking knife despawns you jump you kill the bird you have to kill the bird or else he's gonna fucking kill you 
then you jump onto that platform and then get the fuck out of there. What you were talking about sounds like the dumbest fucking shit I have heard. And it's so specific and step by step and methodical that I can tell. Because it, it, it's been so. It's been like um, over a week, right? Since you played this game. Yeah. Yeah, it has. Th- that really says how much you've died to that one part. How much it's burnt into your brain from repetition and just doing it over and over and over again, dying and dying and dying. I think that was the worst fucking jump I've ever seen in a game ever. <laughs> Honestly. That's Honest, awesome. That was the worst thing. I Somewhere in that level. People suffer. There was another piece of shit jump where there's a dude with a machine gun on one of these like one tile platforms again. Dude, I should you watch think see if you can, like... Phil tried playing this game. <laughs> It'd be amazing. Uh-oh. I'd be yeah. I'd be interested if he made it past the first fucking level. There's one guy with like a machine gun and they shoot like constantly at you. It's like three bullets and if they hit you they knock you back and you're fucked. And you have to like you're on an elevated platform and you think, oh, okay, I can just jump and like slash him or jump slash No, you fucking can't. You'll die every time. What you have to do is like the, the one where the fucking bird spawns in stage like five or whatever it was, you have to Turn, angle yourself backward, jump, and then cling to the wall of the platform you were just on. Then you have to, um... Stay with me. The guy's gonna start shooting at you, so you need to make sure you, Stay um, with me. Wh- what? Stay with me. Is it gonna be okay? We're gonna get through this together. But you have to, like, angle yourself, like, at a, at a certain <laughs> altitude. Because if you get hit by the fucking machine gun guy, you're gonna fall off and die. <laughs> So you so have to angle yourself you that get way. The angle right. Yeah, you have to um, <laughs> land at the exact fucking spot to where you can jump forward, flash the guy in midair, kill him, cling to that platform, <laughs> jump back to the other one at a slight higher elevation, and then jump onto that platform and then move on. So here, here's what I gotta say about Ninja Gaiden. It's crazy to think this is a game that came out before the ESRB, and, and this is a, a game targeted towards children of the right mind to play. And I, I don't think, think it was just there to sell controllers, but continue. <laughs> I was about to say, they don't come out right-minded as when they bought it. I, I guess I don't want to see what those kids look like these days. Of course, even all of that is nothing compared to the gauntlet of bosses you fight at the very end of that level. These fucking bosses, man. If The other bosses were fucking easy, right? They, they were nothing. If you had trouble on those bosses, good fucking luck here. The robot is trembling right now. I actually wide. am, because I'm remembering shot. fucking Jakuo. It, really, the only hard boss here, especially hard boss, is Jakuo. The, the other bosses you can handle reasonably. The first boss is your dad. They brainwashed him, and now he's like this fucking badass. They mind broke him like a hentai comic. Yeah, and <laughs> just like a hentai, he's going to fuck you if you don't kill him first. Uh. So you have to like, <laughs> this is where you really need to know how to wall jump, by the way. <laughs> And wall jumping is fucking hard in that game. I I wasn't able to get it down, but I was still able to barely beat this guy. Because he shoots these, like, a million fucking projectiles in every direction, and they bounce around and shit. So you have to, like, jump up above him at the top of the room, jump down, and then cancel slash as much as you can to get his health down and then kill him. God forbid you fucking die on any of these bosses, by the way, because if you do, you start all over again at stage six, and oh, no. you have to go through that hell jumps. again. You do the jumps again. You have to do both Machine of those fucking guns. jumps again. I'm sure there's a bunch of other shit that I'm missing that was total horse. Oh yeah, like the Repressed the fucking. Memories. I forgot to mention these guys. These guys were worse than the fucking birds. Uh, these little they fly on jetpacks and they shoot like these lines of projectiles at you, and you have to either slash through them. And there's always a million of them that spawn, and it's really hard to like hit them because they come at you at all Did you angles. Count them? Hmm? Did you count them? A million? I tried. I lost count after like sixty. They they instantly <laughs> they fucking they continuously spawn. Yeah. Okay. The awesome. screen gets flooded with projectiles in no time. It's like you're playing a fucking uh, Toho oh, yeah. game on the hardest difficulty. It's yeah. fucking bullshit, Music and they Garden don't fucking awesome. stop. This game is fucking but anyway, cool. uh, after you get past all that, and let's say you get past the the first boss of that level, then yeah. comes the second boss, Jakuo. This is the worst boss I've ever experienced in a video game. It, and it seems deceptively simple. If you're just watching it, you know, it's whatever. The dude flies at the top of the uh, the chamber, and he shoots these two projectiles down at you. But there's a trick. Yeah, go on. They're homing. They home in on you, right? And if you, if you aren't on the ground or near a wall where they can fly towards you, you avoid them, and then they, <sighs> like, despawn off screen, they're uh-huh. going to turn around, and they're going to do what I, th- I think they do more damage if they turn and try to and, and fuck you there. Either way, they do a lot of damage, 
and you've got to get that timing just right. I died so many fucking times on this boss. God, why do it's I feel two like fucking I'm... projectiles and they'll curve as they're falling down to you. You've got to make sure you are nowhere near the middle of the screen, or again, they're going to come back and they're going to overwhelm you, and he's going to keep firing them, and you're inevitably going to die. So what you've got to do is get that fucking timing right. Uh, there's a gap. There's like. Three platforms where you jump on to try to uh, slash him, and two of them are towards the uh, left of the screen, one of them's on the right. You've got to angle yourself on, like, either to the opposite of that uh, room, or you've got to just hug the wall of the right side of the chamber. Wait for those two, um... They were what? I need you to stop. Well, you, you know you gotta... Bro, you to I'm not done yet. I'm I not... Oh, you, right. you gotta use okay. your masterful editing skills. Don't touch that dial, kids. <laughs> you gotta get the timer right. You gotta cancel slash the shit out of him until he dies. And once that's done, then comes the last boss. And the last boss isn't that bad if you know what you're doing. It looks really cool. You've got a, an NES game. It's cool. You've, it kind of looks like some HR Geiger shit. But you've got to jump up and cancel slash the head until it falls off. And you've got to avoid the head because it's gonna roll and try to kill you. So no. Then head. you've got to kill the the little tail tentacle thing at the bottom, and then you've got to kill the heart, the little glowing gemstone. And that's where you actually do damage. If you die here, I feel so sorry for you because you're going to have to do all that shit again. You're probably going to die on Jakuo about a million more times. So you really need to get that last boss on the first attempt. I cannot stress that enough. And if you do all that, well, then you save the day. And, oh, yeah, your dad fucking dies, by the way. A winner is you. Ryu I, uh, from popular game King of Fighters. Ryu from popular game Strider and <laughs> whatever. I really enjoyed that game. I'm glad I decided to pick it up. I played a little bit of Ninja Gaiden 2, no, and I would like to you're say... Of King of Street Fighters. Oh, my bad. With the bouncing tits? Yeah, Ryu? With the bouncing tits, oh yeah. That's the one. The reason why uh, Kojima won't, won't put Ken in Smash Brothers is because of the bouncing tit. Yeah, it's really unfortunate, because I really wanted to see his jiggle physics. Yeah. Uh, so when we, we all know get... Kojima hates women. Kojima does hate women. Like, this isn't even the bit right now. He just hates women. But when are we going to do another fighting game tournament, guys? <laughs> Anyways. I don't know. I think we should sometime soon. That'd be pretty fun. Uh, Robot, how long did it take to finish Ninja Gaiden? In, in uh, a couple of nights. So what would you estimate your playtime to be? Uh, hours. Well, that's six. Okay. Okay, six hours. But how many years did you lose in your life because of playing that game? Probably about six. Yeah, how much, uh, how many Probably diseases did you develop? How many ulcers? Six. And I think I'm gonna die in Ninja Gaiden 2, like IRL, because it's really cancerous. I haven't played much of it, but I would just like to bring up one point about that game. Yeah. On the second stage, there's a level where you've got to deal with wind that blows you in every direction and it the changes fucking constantly. Wind. And if, if it's blowing in the opposite direction and you're jumping on a platform, you're fucking dead. Oh my god, it, it kind of reminds me of, uh, Mario 2, uh, I'm sorry, Mario Lost Levels, well, I guess Ninja that's what Ninja Gaiden is a Mario-like at the end of the day. So let me, let me yeah. tell you something about Mario, Mario Lost Rogue -like. Levels. I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna play through that game. It's, it's, it's like the one Mario game that's complete bullshit. The I game mean, it's so bullshit that they didn't release it in America. <laughs> yeah, it punishes you for, like, going to the warp zone, like, you know, in Mario 1, if you go to the warp zone, you're like, hey, uh, you're in like uh, World World One right now. You can take this. Go to World Four. It's like, yeah. oh, that's a cool skip. If you try that shit in Mario uh, Lost Levels and you find a warp zone, it's like, would you like to go back to World One or kill yourself? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, and then like instead of super mushrooms or poison mushrooms, and the wind does knock you around, and you got to beat the game twice just to uh, save Princess Peach. It's a good thing we got Doki Doki Literature Club instead. Yeah. yeah, thank God we got Super Mario Brothers Super Show instead. Dude, These games are yo. bullshit. Uh, yeah, um, I thought they were really fun, and I'm definitely looking forward to the 3D remakes on Steam next month. I'm totally going to play those. That's cool that you mentioned that, because I was about to mention it again. I've heard about Ninja Gaiden. Like, I played Dragon Sword or whatever it's called, Dragon Scroll, on the DS. That game, I don't know, probably not too similar to the other games. And like I said, I played the NES game years ago. Over the years, I have heard about these 3D Ninja Gaiden games back on the original Xbox before they got ported over and all that. And over time, I've realized how infamously hard those harder difficulties are. And that got me real interested in checking out this game. I wasn't expecting them to even have difficulties, but if they do, I promise I'll play on the hardest one. Hell yeah. I was actually about to ask you, like, how far you want to go with this, man? Because I'll match you. As far as it'll let me. 
I'm going to try to get all the achievements in those games. Oh, all right, all right. It's going to be a race, then. Oh, you're going to try that, too, huh? Yeah, hell yeah. It'll be fun, then. Okay. <laughs> you sound really bitter. But, yeah, because you already surpassed me in fucking Halo achievements. So I don't know if I'll win that, but I'm definitely going to beat the shit out of those games, and it's going to be great. I just need to go ahead and fucking release already. There is a, a game that you will beat the shit out of me way, way more than me, though, and we'll, we'll get to that in a minute, but... I was doing some research on this Ninja Gaiden Steam trilogy because I kind of wanted to know what I was getting yeah. myself into. Not uh -huh. the gameplay itself, but like how, what kind of a release it is because I noticed it was kind of split up on the store page. I was like, what the hell is this? Like, Because we got like Ninja Gaiden, then the Greek letter Sigma. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, I think that's just the name of the... Um, just to differentiate those games from the Xbox releases. The Xbox, yeah. I think, were referred to as Black, and these are Sigma. Yeah, So exactly. these are the ones that are being remastered. This is a port. Uh, Ninja Gaiden Black was a re-release on the original Xbox as well. It had more content. Yeah. But this mm -hmm. was, like, a port to the next generation after that. Like, 360 and PS3. Yeah. Unfortunately, apparently, the first game, Sigma, it apparently took away some, some of Ryu's costumes. However, the second game, Sigma, which I, I thought was, like, fucking hilarious... Apparently they added, you know how like the PS3 controller has uh, motion controls and it's six axis bullshit or whatever? Yeah, it vibrates when you put it in your mouth, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know about that, but yeah. Apparently you can control the, the, the breast jiggles f jiggle physics with the motion controls. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, it's really funny. I think it's super funny. And I don't understand, just real quick, because I see it on the Steam page and I visited their website. I think they're advertising pre-orders, but there's no way to do it, and we're like less than a month from a release. Yeah, and I'm looking no at this and I'm so confused. I don't even know how much it's I don't know if they're going to delay it, or if they've already delayed it and they just haven't said anything, or what. But what's, what's the cost going to be? I don't fucking know. I would assume like 60 bucks. Yeah, something. That's a bit overpriced, but that's definitely the upper limit. It's like yeah, 70. if it was like seven or some bullshit like that, some fucking Resident Evil Eight shit, I would probably just look towards emulators. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I would look towards um buying them off eBay and playing on the uh, Xbox yeah. console that I own. Nod, nod. Yeah. But there is a game that you will be. Oh, oh, Brent. First off, Brandon, how much of Ninja Gaiden do you plan on playing? You said you're gonna play the, the you're gonna complete all three of the trilogy. I'll play one, two, and three of the. Of the old school trilogy, and I will kind of I will see how the 3D ones are. I don't know what kind of promise I can make. If it gives me the same vibe as Onimusha, I fucking gonna love it. Cause I loved Onimusha. Well, I don't I didn't love it. I really liked it. Or something. I think it was kind of whatever in gameplay, but good experience overall. There is a game you will definitely surpass me in, as I said before, Gear Robot, and that game is having its 10th anniversary. Oh yeah, Terraria. Terraria's got its 10th anniversary. I've been playing a shit ton of that game. And I just wanted to take a little bit of time to gush over that game because it's one of the best games ever made easy. I've been playing it on Master Mode, both in a, on a hardcore like permadeath character and then separately on just a regular one. Yeah. Flawless difficulty, if you know what you're doing. Otherwise, I'd recommend Expert or Classic. Balancing on that game so great. There's so much shit to do. You know, you're, you're never going to feel too overpowered for too long before you have to go tackle something else and you get your ass kicked again. That that stuff's great. I, I've been playing this game since it came out, like, 2011 or whatever. And it's just been fun to see it, like, progress into this absolutely massive game where it's like, you don't even really need mods to enjoy it. Unlike, um, say, like, Minecraft, Minecraft or Skyrim yeah. or some shit. Because there is just so much to do. I don't, honestly, I don't know what more I can say about it. It's just perfect fucking game. If you haven't played it yet, then play it. I think it has a high barrier of entry. For me, at least, so whenever whenever I, I go into it with people, like I feel like I'm I'm a slow learner at this game because I was doing fine on my own. But whenever we go into a server, I feel like lost, like I don't know what to do or what to start with. I feel like everyone else gets like miles ahead of me like immediately. But when I was playing alone, like I got a lot of cool shit. I got to explore a lot. You know, I got like a flaming like mace that I spun around a ball and chain. That's definitely the best way to play it, is just to explore and find shit, whether you want to... I, I play by a meta now, just because on Master Mode you kind of have to. So it's like, I don't even bother mining at first, I'll just explore the surface, go fishing until I get some of the best gear, and then yeah, continue that gaming. way. Yeah, pretty much. But, I mean, the, the true way to play that game is just fuck around and find out, essentially. And it's great at that, too. You know, the exploration, the building... Uh, the combat, all super rewarding. But yeah, again, perfect game. Still not as hard as Ninja Gaiden on Master Mode. You say it's a perfect game? Like, it's is it like your favorite game, or...? 
Well, no, because Planescape Torment is still a thing, but if that stuff didn't exist, uh, yeah, probably. It's definitely up there. Above Quake? No. Yeah. No, and that's that's mainly just <laughs> um, me growing up with Quake, and I, I like shooters more. Just Oh, so this is a matter of, like, a little more objective opinion. Yeah. This is more of an objective, like, yeah, this is game is objectively perfect. Rather than your own personal feelings attached to it. Well, that's a lot of that, too, but... I don't know, there's not much of anything bad that I can say about it other than it ends, which kind of sucks. Like, it actually has an ending. They're not going to update it anymore, I don't think. Every update, they say they're gonna, it's going to be the last one, and it's not, so who knows. But, yeah, I don't see any flaws with it. I can't remember if it was you, or Vice, or Brandon. I think it was you, actually, that said... you. Someone does it here doesn't like games with a time crunch. That was Gay Robot. Yeah, that was Gay Robot. Oh yeah, that was me. Which which is funny because I feel like there's a time crunch in Terraria. How? Like over time, like stuff will happen, like bosses will spawn, right? And well, that's only if you've got like certain HP pools and you're meeting like certain criteria. Oh, okay. So it just goes to your your stats. Yeah. So like if you've got. A certain amount of HP, uh, the Eye of Cthulhu will start stalking and you at night. And when we did, like, our hard mode or whatever playthrough originally, back when it was the four of us, uh, me, you, Brandon, and Spader, it was our average. Yeah, basically, I didn't know what I was doing at that time, so I came on with a character that was, like, full 400 HP. I immediately went to go break some shadow altars. That, basically, all that combined enabled everything pre-hard mode to go ahead and start spawning. It was our first experience playing the game, and it was harrowing. <laughs> it was, it was, it's, it's a fun game. What can I say? Anything else about the game you want to say, Brandon? Maybe? About Terraria? Yeah. I played it for a couple hours, and I like starting from zero and building my myself up. So, somehow, I don't think the multiplayer is that, that great because of being able to take characters that you've already built up pretty well and put them in other worlds. Uh, it kind of feels unbalanced to where I'm, I might as well just be playing by myself for a long period of time before I jump in with my friends. I don't know. I kind of like the feature because, like, I would have never expected that to be a thing in the game. But I, I think I like it because, you, could, you know, you don't lose your inventory upon death. And I think kind of pisses me off about Minecraft is, you know, it's a random creeper explosion out of nowhere. And you might lose your shit. Or lava. You can definitely lose some stuff in Terraria. If, uh, you can lose your money. Um, if you can, se- you can have a setting where your character loses items on death, too, if you want to do that. I was playing I don't know... Uh, Minecraft server, and I, I, I spent a while getting shit, and I lost everything because the nether, I fell in lava, and, like, I wasn't yeah, familiar with new, new nether shit, and, like, I kind of just stopped playing after that. That's why when we play Minecraft, we use a gravestones mod, which keeps all your stuff in a, in a gravestone. That's good. That's handy. Of course, then you have to, like, you have to pillar down with gravel when you die in the nether, but at least it's an option. Mm-hmm. Do you, does it stay after death, or is it Dark Souls? What? Does it stay? Does the gravestone stay? It wouldn't be level? useful if it didn't stay after death, now would it? Yeah, but then Dark Souls came out, and now everything wants to be Dark Souls. So that's true. Everything, everything wants, wants to be wants Dark to Souls. Souls. Everything it really does. New DS came out, you know. And Ninja Gaiden was very inspired by. Ever since the first Souls. Dark Souls game, Wario Land came out. As yeah. we all know, the DS Wario stands Ford. for Dark Souls. So it does. On the Virtual Boy, not a lot of people know that. The three Dark Souls is my favorite portable console i love kingdom hearts 3d on the three dark souls vice do you want to talk about any of terraria like i know you kind of uh that, but... all i know about terraria is my friend really likes the sex mods <laughs> oh right her i'm amazed those exist but i guess i shouldn't be surprised yeah. um i guess if you she really the likes mod. the sex mod that's all i have to say but i mean i've i've told you the story but i can tell the story here about the time oh yeah feel free. there is that guy who was really upset? We were playing multiplayer. He was really obsessed with getting all the boss trophies. He was hoarding the boss trophies, mm-hmm. and one day I just fucking stole them all from him. And he had this. Com- he went completely ballistic. He had a meltdown. But what really pissed him off wasn't the fact that uh, that I took the trophies from him. It's that he laid down this like he like laid down this Scooby Doo trap to try to figure out who took the trophies because he didn't know. He was like doing laying this elaborate scheme to try to figure out who did it and then people just asked me did you take the trophies vice i said yeah and so all of his fucking scheming was for nothing he just completely lost his shit that's what really pissed him off did you go in back i would have loved it if he just like fell into his own trap (laughs) (laughs) having a that's not not what i mean by trap 
Oh, you don't mean like an actual trap in Terraria? No, like, like, a, like, like a psychological a trap. trap. Yeah. I thought you were talking about the gay kind for a second, but alright. <laughs> no, no. Although I think he was one. That's another story. Oh, another cool. story for another time in another place. In another world, in another timeline. But yeah, I fully intend to get all the achievements in that game. Not that they're too hard to get. I'm glad that, that my bullshit has inspired you, Gay Robot. I like that. Because I feel like, I feel like at least you, I don't know about the others, but I feel like that day when, when we did that Dead Rising thing, I think, think it set some, some aspirations in motion. Not for yeah, me, man. Reminded me I need to get that fucking mount. Yeah, I wanted to actually talk about that tonight. There's not much to talk about, I don't have it. <laughs> exactly, like, yeah. Yeah, uh, how, how, have, you, have you been doing any more of it? Yeah, I mainly try to farm it out at weeknights when everybody's like, you know, doing gay shit like sleeping because they got work in the morning. Me, I don't. Yeah. So I'm just no life in the Let's fuck out of it trying to get that dragon. Okay, I get it. It is, yeah. Like, I'll occasionally find like a group and we'll scout it out. I, I remember the last time I was doing it. was like last weekend, or last week sometime. I was there for a solid like eight hours. I had watched all of Mob Psycho in that time. Yeah, we'll talk about that next time once we complete the exchange, but yeah. Yeah. But which that made it very uh, entertaining. By the way, that was a saving grace. We'll have to do another exchange just so I can have something to do while farming this stupid mount. <laughs> God, I, I wanted but to yeah, ask you. Um, just eight hours and nothing happened. It was great. That's horrible. I wanted to ask you though, how can we support you in this way? Like, would you streaming it help? Like that one time, would that help, or would that just make it worse? I wouldn't. Like, I wouldn't want to wish this on my worst enemy. <laughs> I'm Nobody sorry, owes I, me anything. You don't have to watch shit. You, you, it's like out. it's literally watching. Uh, for, for those who are wondering, it's the time loss proto drag. So anyone who's played the game probably already knows what the fuck kind of pain I'm going through. You just sit at, a, at the same spot and you stare at a fucking snowy mountain. You stare at a wall for hours on end, and there's no guarantee you're gonna get it for another month or so. Do you have the statistics on hand, Gay Robot? For nope. Nope. I have some. I don't have. The dragon's shares a spawn with another NPC that's completely fucking useless. Has an in achievement that I already have, no mount, that spawns more frequently. We don't know by how much, but the spawn for that stupid fucker is completely up to RNG. That's about it. You, If you kill him, either Viragosa, the other dragon, or the Time Lost Proto Drake, you have to wait upwards of... You have to wait 30 minutes for the the body to despawn, and then another like two hours or some shit just to have a chance. Two to four hours just to have a chance for it to spawn, and then like I think it's ideally supposed to spawn, like guaranteed one of them is going to spawn within eight hours. That doesn't always happen though. I like, I, or I'm missing something. Even though I had a group that was like all night there for straight up eight hours. And we didn't see shit. Yeah. So I actually don't know anymore. I don't know how much they've changed that. I know they've off and on over the past 10 fucking years have been continuing to change this this uh, mob here. But uh, yeah, I have no idea. One thing I think I remember is like, I believe a little over 3% of the player base has this. However, that number is actually massively bloated because it was more, way more available in the original game. It was not so r and Basically, what would happen back during Wrath, which was the expansion where this was released in, the spawn time was much longer. You could go upwards of 22 hours and not see anything. Guaranteed, like, not see anything. Not see so what people would do is, uh -huh. hey, it's a Kandar joke. You would get a whole group of, like, 40-something people, right? Yeah. You group up, and you would take the different spawns. And back then, there was no limit to how many people the mount would drop for in a group. So you would get all of these fucking people together. You'd farm that shit out. Somebody would, like, call it out. They'd all go in range, uh, swarm it. They'd kill it. Then it would drop for everybody. They patched that out, so now it only drops up to five people. So you can have a bigger group. You can have, like, a group of six people if you want. But one person's not going to get that fucking mount. Right. So it wasn't less RNG than... It, it was uh, it was just that it was way more generous. Kinda, there were trade offs because again, it took longer to spawn. But what people would it didn't matter because you know the autism would kick in and a bunch of guilds would like get together and actually work to get this mount. So I don't know how much of the percentage of players who own that mount actually got it in wrath when all that was happening compared to how many people are getting it now. I would imagine most of the people uh, who have it got it in wrath. I could be wrong, but that's. Knowing what happened back then, uh, it's not hard to imagine that being the case. And once again, Garoba has been at this for like nine or eleven years. I can't remember which one. Ten years, I think. Working on, uh, working on like ten or I don't know, ten or eleven. It, it's it's a full decade for sure. Basically, yeah, just off and on. You know? And that never fucking saw his ass. That is insane. Well, 
That's not that's not fair to say. I did see him once. I actually killed him once, but I died. And for some reason, because the mount, I think it's because the mount is like the stupid fucking ninety eight point nine percent chance to drop. It didn't fucking drop for me. You got the point two percent. I got the oh. fucking stupid point two percent. Just make it hundred percent. What the fuck? That's just one little fuck you. One last fuck you from the developer. Yeah, that was back when uh, Warlords of Draenor was still a thing. That was like twenty sixteen. I stopped playing that game for years. After that, for like two years. I can't blame you. I just quit immediately. I com I completely unsubbed that day. I was so pissed. I haven't played World of Warcraft since I played on my friend's account back in middle school. I was late to my uh, driving test because I was farming that fucking mount. Damn, this dedication. I know. What? You know the only reason like, I even left to get it right that day was because out. Vera spawned. And I was like, shit. <laughs> I might as well get this done. I can't fly a dragon, so I might as well drive a car. What are you going to say, Brandon? That's essentially it. It's just like, you were late for your driving test because you were trying to get a far better means of uh, transport and travel. Yeah, fresh from the mountains. Pretty much. You but, don't need a license to drive a dragon. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll definitely make an announcement on here when I, I actually get it. No, we're going to have a festival. Yeah, I'm gonna find that, a way to that, celebrate. I will have to get that thing before WoW dies because given what Blizzard's been doing recently, I'm guessing it won't be that long now. At least I hope not. They're taking so. their, their driver's license and driving that bitch right into the grave, huh? They are. They really are. I don't know what the fuck Blizzard's doing these days. Blizzard doesn't know what the fuck Blizzard's doing. Oh, people, uh, did you see that Jeff Kaplan left Blizzard? Yes, I did, and I don't that. fucking blame him either. What? Hmm? What was that, Wesker? What, said Wesker? You, I said you mentioned that. Yeah, I, I can't believe that. it. I really... I mean, he's free to make his as many Booty Palace games as he wants. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> to, uh, to clarify that for the, the people at home... All two of you. Before Jeff Kaplan made Overwatch, the first game he pitched was a game called Jeff Kaplan's Booty Palace, which was just mainly the early Overwatch characters, the female characters, twerking, and there was no other gameplay at all. And uh, they were like, yeah, Jeff, this is this is great, but... Uh, you can still pick it up at goodoldgames.com. Jeff Kaplan's Booty Palace at goodoldgames.com. There should be some gameplay with this. And he's like, really? Fine. What, what do you want? I, I don't know. Add, I don't know. Kids like shooters that like team fortress 2 so let's just yeah. rip that off kids yeah, just like rip genji off. put in genji but we need a spunky uh lesbian main character to put on a cover art so work on to remind people that we're virtuous now so then he added tracer because he uh he stole some some art off deviant art and that's why she's called tracer because he traced <laughs> her and this is all the true story you can look this up you can fact check this on wikipedia i'll go write the article right now or you can find it on the on the best uh, source of factual information westcarosity you know you yeah can, if we say actually, something you can guarantee it's right here because i'm on this this thing you should actually like make that article that'd be a good idea i will i'll, I'll link it in the video description oh That's don't fine. bother looking on the blizzard forums i'm sure they've censored that to shit over the years. Yeah, you can still find the paradox forums Oh yeah, Paradox Interactive. Yeah, but yeah, the Blizzard forums. I mean, if you're not, if they're not whining about StarCraft balance, then they're whining then, about Overwatch balance. They're whining about Overwatch balance. I'm, do people even give a shit about Overwatch anymore? Isn't there a second uh, game now? So like, there's a second I know game some that I people who play it, but I don't know anybody who actually takes it seriously. Isn't I haven't heard of being talked about in forever. Even when they announced the sequel, it's like nobody gave a shit. Yeah. I played a little bit of it. Like I think last year sometime. Just to see what had changed, because I was morbidly curious about the games that Blizzard cared about more than WoW. I was, I was like, okay, well, why am I being neglected? Maybe this is a really kick-ass game. Maybe it's better than last time I played it when I fucking hated everything. I played it for a little bit, um, and I uninstalled it. Probably that day, I think. Vice and I actually played competitive back in Season 2 and 3. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah we How were, was that? We were scraping Diamond. It was very frustrating. Yeah, it was frustrating how we could play against Diamond players and with Diamond players on our team, we but we could never them. allow it to be Diamond ourselves. The definition of hard stuck. And we'd always get the worst people. We'd always get these fucking Genjis who, if we didn't win the first push, they'd just quit. I felt like I was a really confident Lucio, too. Like, I was you getting... I was, I was landing my headshots. I was, you know, I was moving the team. Everything was sweet, but... And I was one of the best D.Va players before they patched her to make her actually good. Yeah, I bet you were. I got... I, I was always... I always preferred playing either um, the cowboy dude... McCree. Or yeah. the blonde chick, the healer. McCree. Mercy. Yeah, and then I recently 
I saw they had some new heroes. I saw they added a cowboy, a cowgirl this time, and also, yeah. I got better at her than whatever the other the other dude's name is. But Mike I wasn't too interested in playing again. The game is lacking in a lot of departments. So what you're saying is. It was made by Blizzard. Yeah. <laughs> what exactly. is this, an out-of-season April Fool's joke? Oh, gee. God, don't get me started on that. God. You guys don't have phones. <laughs> Ooh, you can... Rama. Ooh, got that one still Ooh, that's staying. some spicy shit that right there. That one still gets right up. Free Hong Kong. I don't even really give a fuck about Blizzard, but that, I feel that one. Ooh. Man, that was some good PR. I don't know a lot <laughs> about uh, Blizzard games, but Blizzard Activision is a thing. i played Activision games, which I guess are now... Blizzard games. I'm glad you brought that up just real quick. I know a lot of people who are still like brand loyalists to Blizzard for whatever cucked reason are going to say, oh, it's just Activision. Blizzard are these like talented saints and they're just having to do that. No, they signed that deal and they're the ones who are making the game. They're just, they're probably more fucking guilty. Activision's just their publisher. It's like, get the fuck over it. Activision just handles the money. That's all they fucking do. Go and actually read the, like, the fucking deals that they signed if you can, and I'm sure you'll find the exact same thing. It's Blizzard who's doing it. All of the original developers are pretty much fucking gone now. I don't think there's anybody left from like like the old WoW days or the old like Warcraft 3 I or StarCraft Chris, days. Wait, Chris Metzen left. He left a while still, ago. He still, yeah. he still consults. In name alone. Like, I think Metzen's working on an entirely different project. I think he's working on he making like a tabletop though. now. Metzen's, wow. Metzen became a loser after he got married and got a life. <laughs> the definition of a loser in the game is... Well, it's the thing. He made the best games when he was miserable. People who are married... He's like Kojima. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People who are married and are, like, you know, successful and they have, like, a social life. Those are the exact opposite of the people who I want to see working on WoW. And that's all of the people who are working on WoW right now. Yeah, all these people that want you to not play WoW and get married. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's what they're doing. They're trying to, like... What's mind-blowing? What the off. fuck? Oh, did, I just, did I just, like, white-pill you on fucking WoW? God damn it. No, you just fucking red-pilled the shit out of me. I just rainbow polka dot pilled you? You can you fucking Charlie Conspiracy Walsh pilled me. Like, the only thing that Blizzard has pilled you. Jesus Christ. Yeah, no, I, I wouldn't give him that much. God, credit. I wish. Why, why are you referencing Mike Jones, of all people? <laughs> I just think he's funny. The man Mike who Jones should be, but never will. Foot massage and barbecue. That's not. That Mike Jones is the character from Star Tropics. You're thinking of, you're thinking oh, of you're Toby. Right. You're thinking of Toby Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, I forgot. Mike Jones is the dude that should be in Smash. Yeah, well, Toby Jones should be in Smash too, but I need to go back and spamming that he should be in Smash. On, he should uh, be in Smash. Comments. There's no reason that he shouldn't be in Smash. For like other a couple of days, I just spammed that Mike Jones for Smash and YouTube. Comments. Other than Kojima's an asshole. I mean, yeah. it is Mugen now, so there's no reason why. Yeah, there's literally no reason. They're putting everybody in. They're putting front of Ronald McDonald in at this point. So God, that is Mugen. They fucking made. They put in the Piranha Plant for God's sake. All right, that one I will never sit down. That one I will never let down. All right, put in 50 more Fire Emblem characters that all use swords. You know, completely neglect almost all the Fire Emblem. You know, okay, one is the Tome user, but he's still mainly using the sword. Okay, okay, but put in fucking Piranha Plant, and you fucking, you fucking cross the line that you're not supposed to cross with. Me. I want no part of a Smash Brothers roast. You have disappointed me. If you, put or, I would rather them. The game. See, Brandon's sweating because he's a Piranha Plant man. Yeah, you there's know, a perfectly it's... good character named pd piranha from a very excellent game called super mario sunshine that was in mario kart double dash and he was in super smash brothers brawl so don't tell me he's too fucking big like fucking ridley oh ridley's too big he's in fucking smash now fucking final smash. pd yeah pd fucking piranha he's the final smash he should be the character he should be small like in double dash and he should be a fucking playable character get fucking pd piranha delete it delete it delete piranha plant Put in PD Piranha. <laughs> Fuck you. PD Piranha kind of makes me uncomfortable. I was arguing with some fucking reject about this. Or it's like, cause, because my biggest complaint about Smash is that there are n n non-Nintendo characters that you can play as. I'm like, what the fuck's the point? You know, if I want to do that, I'll literally go play actual Mugen. Well, and they're like, like oh, that? no, there's no, I fucking hate that shit. And there's still, it's like, there's no Nintendo characters I can pull from. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, he's there's stupid. plenty of them. Okay, he's stupid. And if we're <laughs> never going to get Marina Light Years, we're never going to get Mike Jones, we're never going to get Toby Jones. I I love the guest characters. Like technically Simon is a guest character. They're not even technically. You mean Simon Belmont? Yeah. Simon Belmont and Rector Belmont are guest characters. Yeah, well well they showed up mainly on the Nintendo Entertainment System, but 
Well, at least for America. For so, you know, fucking Richter. R- Richter's a funny situation. I like how Alucard is an assist trophy. I'm sure uh, some people were Everyone disappointed. Everyone loves that, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say something about Blizzard earlier. Yeah. I don't understand why the newest Crash Bandicoot game, you need a Battle.net account to play it, Ew. which means there's a... Which means there's a DRM yeah, requirement. I was meaning to talk to you about Ugh. that, see if you know anything about that. That's fucking gross. Uh, so I'm not getting the PC version of it. I don't care about modding or cracking or whatever the fuck. Uh, I'll just play it on the PlayStation. because I'm not. What's wrong with having a Battle.net account? I wouldn't use it for anything else other than Crash. I mean, the only thing I use it for is fucking WoW. I would sooner just rather launch that game directly than fuck with Battle.net. And uh, I can actually kind of put the disc in my console when my internet is out. It's fine. <laughs> what is DRM? Yeah. Oh, God. So, I, I don't understand, like, why you would ever need to connect to the internet to play Crash Bandicoot 4, uh, unless there's some leaderboard stuff, but it checks on you. Make sure you're not stealing the game that you, prob- you probably did, and it won't do anything about it anyway. You have a workaround, so whatever. That someone yeah. installed into the cracked game. I think Crash Bandicoot should be in Smash, but I don't care that much, because I, I think... I want Master Chief to be in Smash. Fuck everything. Okay, if Master Chief. I want Smash. Toby Jones to be in Smash. I want Andrew Jackson to be in Smash. I want. I would be in Smash. I'm kind of okay with the Smash roster. Also, Doug should be in Smash as Quail Man. <laughs> That's his final. They're gonna make that his final Smash. <laughs> they uh, will when they put him in Smash. Yeah. I want the um the Crimson Chin to be in. Oh, Smash. I was gonna say they should put the uh the uh the evil version of the Crimson Chin. In. I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. I, I had to fight the urge to say it. Yeah, me too. I want the Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow to be the, the cover, the, that one, uh, that cover art of the cover art, you know what I'm talking about? For the DS? I want that to be put in Smash. Just the cover art. Sheen from Planet Sheen should be in there. I'm surprised Sheen they haven't from come Planet out Sheen. That's yeah, great. That's <laughs> Not from Jimmy from... Neutron, but from Planet Sheen. What the fuck's that? I'm talking about Planet Sheen. Yeah, of course, the original series. Don't worry about it. You know, I never. You know, I was I was a very ignorant child. I could never tell. I always thought Sheen was Asian. He wasn't. He's, uh, he's Hispanic. Yeah, yeah, he's Hispanic. Holy shit! I thought he was Asian father, too. How he just, like, he's like a Spanish soap opera. How he like puts his hand up in the air when he speaks. And we just so... made Della effect. We jumped timelines and to a hey, timeline Jimmy, what you doing, Asian. man? I think it was the accent because I think I was a little racist bastard. Oh my god, he doesn't have an Asian accent. I'll, I'll be real. It was Nothing just, about just... him looks Asian. <laughs> I'll be real. It was it was just his skin color that made me think he was Asian. It's literally the it's only little... thing. Like he looks. And that Asian. just means he's vaguely off-white, which you could say he's Middle Eastern under that criteria. I think it was the I hair guess, for me. But I, dude, when I was that young, I didn't know what the fucking Middle East was. What the fuck? I think it was yeah. the hair because I might have seen, you know, I might have seen some anime back when I was. A I child. mean, yeah, he's got the salary spiky man hair. buzz cut. He's got but... spiky hair, like oh, he's anime. He's an he's an Asian character. Like, he's an anime. <laughs> homo- he's an anime homage. He's well, not, screw you. It's, it's okay. He's a so, big fan of Casher and Sins. It's not Ultra Lord. It's Casher and Sins. Oh, did I discuss this with you guys? Who's the worst character? I mean, like, who's more, who's more virtuous or more evil? Neutron, Jimmy Neutron, or Dexter? Yeah, I brought this up, but okay. Uh, Jimmy Neutron and, and was, is foul. My question was, who was smarter though? Right. Yeah. Okay. Which one? And it's evolved into morality. Right. Well. That was our test to figure out who was more smart by who had the superior morality. And I never saw Death. I never saw Dexter because I only watched Nickelodeon back in the days. I don't know. Is is his strongest stat is intelligence? However, Jimmy's strongest stat is charisma. I'll be honest. Jimmy has no charisma. Look, but Jimmy causes a lot of horrible shit to happen. He makes people think he's smart. But Dexter, you will constantly see him like helping a society in ending world hunger. In the middle of the episode, there is, there is an episode where he gets world peace and ends world hunger. Yeah, he just does that casually. There was one where he was a borderline he drug dealer because he thinks he's gonna die from a bean burrito. <laughs> there was. It's true. I, I, I remember the episode where he became like a drug pusher because he was getting this, he was like selling this addictive candy. You know, he's yeah. like a politician. He would create these weird fucking problems that nobody had, so that only he could solve them. There's a I did create on that. And he dumped him into the sewer. He's a fucking megalomaniac. He and he's not charismatic. He's just he's like Covio. Okay, charisma is is a very interesting beast. It's not necessarily someone who's charming. It's Don't forget can... that Jimmy condemned his baby nephew 
and a bunch of other people to prehistoric times to be killed by dinosaurs. He also, like, Based. sold his parents to fucking uh, alien, like, intergalactic slavery. He didn't sell them. He didn't, he didn't oh, do that right. on purpose. That wasn't really his fault. He just, he just made a fucking wish. He made contact, and, uh, and the aliens weren't too friendly. There was also the Jimmy Neutron special where they were on an intergalactic show, and he, he was super into, like, the infested shit. And it kind of the lives of everybody that he knew on some alien pussy which he, he probably yeah he was a bestialic now that you think about it he also threatened to kill literally everybody in the in the entire sector of the galaxy there was also it, the episode about pants and i think vice was very afraid of that when i was a child i saw so much no. advertising for the pants episode as a kid it was, it was like, like it was also it was like the shittiest episode too. That was one of the quintessential Jimmy Neutron episodes that they would play on repeat all yeah. the fucking time. If you why. saw Jimmy Neutron on the TV guide, you bet your ass it was probably either Carl gets sick and they have to go inside of him, or is the pants episode. Why it was the pants one? You know they played a lot of hidden uh, crouching Jimmy hidden Shane too. Which one was that? I think that was this later special in Egypt or something. Every time I saw yeah, it, I it was they were always playing the episode where they go underwater. Wesker, why would crouching? Jimmy Hidden Sheen be the the Egyptian episode. I'm wondering that myself. <laughs> because I don't know, man. It's Jimmy Neutron. Nothing makes no, sense. That episode was all about Libby realizing that she, she, <laughs> she kind of looked Kang. like. Wait, shit. do you just know what the episode was about? I don't know how I remember the, the episode Egyptian episode. Was... They're like they're learning about ancient Egypt in class, and then Jimmy's like, "Fuck this noise. Let's just go to Egypt." And then they find some some hieroglyphs on on the wall inside of the pyramid. And he's just like, Libby, that looks exactly like you. Go tell those mummies to fuck off. That is a direct quote, by the <laughs> way, from the, mo- from, the, from the show, when Jimmy says, fuck that noise. And that one episode in particular just felt so desolate. Like, that was the one episode that felt like a really... It, it all felt like a budget, like, um, like a fucking video game cutscene on a budget. But that one in particular was, like, really bad. I remember the Egypt... That shit was just empty. Episode very well because that was the episode that changed Libby's hairstyle forever. She Did it? I thought it just changed it for once. What was her it, yeah. hairstyle before? It's like a one-off thing. It like hid one of her eyes and it was tied up at the top. And now, oh my god, you're right. I remember that oh. now. Holy oh yeah, fuck. they made her more of a grown-up. Uh, the girl from Rugrat, Susie. Yeah, Carmichael. Holy shit! Well, uh, I'm before... trying to find it, but I'm just seeing her old hairstyle. Before we we close it off, we've been going on for a while. I just wanted to say. I made quite a bit of progress in my Halo quest of getting all achievements for the Master Chief Collection. I have finished Halo Combat Evolved, Halo 2, Halo 3, and Halo 3 or DOST, all on Heroic now. Brendan and I are pretty good through Halo 1 on Legendary. We have the library to do next, and we tried that once, and we, we gave up on the first checkpoint after like 10 minutes. I'm going to really need to have my A game next time we play. It's, it, it's real play. fucked up, man. I beat Castlevania 3 that night, and that beating Castlevania 3 beat the shit out of me. Wow, okay, that explains some. But that mission is just hard as fuck. Like, stuff stuff spawns for half an hour, and you just you just can't do anything. You gotta, you gotta keep moving. You're given no time to pause or relax. I mean, technically there is an exploit, but which I'm going to happily abuse later on in my playthroughs of that level, but eh, fair game. I've been playing, re- most recently I have started Halo Reach on Legendary, of course, bought myself for that achievement, and uh, Gear Robot, you said that, was this the one that gave you the most trouble that you've done on, on Legendary, more than ODS? No, Heroic, um, le- fucking, and really, the it's the last few levels that are really bad, that whole game's really fucking hard. It is. But the Pillar of Autumn is the bitchiest fucking level you will ever face i faced it on heroic and i had never felt more gamer rage at that than any wow. I-, I felt more rage at that level than i did ninja guide and i'd rather go play ninja guide and fucking again. really oh my god on heroic yeah. too not because ba- well, the problem with pillar of autumn is like where you're firing off like across a field you don't know what you're shooting at there's a ton of fucking elites they're all like mini bosses in that game the, yeah. the elites in um- reach are fucking insane After, you're gonna be engaging him forever and you're going to run out of ammo on precision weapons and you'll be stuck with plasma pistols you'll be stuck were, with whatever you can find on the ground and it's fucking horse shit yeah as enemies elites have been irrelevant as as enemies as i said not on the plot but as enemies since halfway through two 
So almost several games. So it really felt like for Reach, they wanted to go back and make them feel intimidating like they were in the original game. And God, by God, they succeeded by making the most terrifying elites in the series. Like, they just won't die. They're everywhere. They Every they other one has ass. a fucking variant of a rocket launcher. They want your ass, and they're going to get it. There's like a ton of classifications for elites. And you got Stellates, you got the fucking Ultras and shit, you yeah, got the, I, the Miners. None of them if, are easy. I don't know if it's normal on Legendary and other games, but I've stuck an elite with a sticky grenade several times on Hit Reach Legendary so far, and they have survived. Yeah. All it's it does is break their shield. One thing you'll notice about Halo, or if you haven't already noticed about Halo 2, is that, and this is a one-off for that game too, it's like, they don't die from just one hit from the sword. It's two hits. Oh, you gotta bring down the shield first? Pretty much. Oh, okay. that, I mean, you can kill them in one hit, but I don't... It's, it's It feels random, because a lot of times they just won't fucking die. That happens in multiplayer, too, and it pisses me off. It's really hard, and I've been dying a lot, but I actually really like it, because I think it, it fits well with the narrative of the game. Oh, it does, but it's gonna piss you the fuck off. It, it has the same effect to Castlevania, where it's so hard that I actually feel like a badass for when I get through it. But yeah, I'm not looking forward to the later uh, missions. It hasn't been been as hard as I expected it to be. Like normally, like I find one area that gives me like a problem for like half an hour, but then like after some reconsidering of tactics, like I eventually push through. It's a little bit of luck, maybe too. The only game that was harder than more bullshit than that was fucking Halo Two Legendary. That's a whole other beast. Which Holy fuck, God! I managed to complete the first two missions on Legendary by myself so far on that game. How long did that take? You were there for a lot of it. Uh, I think a couple of hours. Oh yeah, an hour for each one, maybe. Yeah. Well, yeah, because no, you fucking cheated. Like, yeah, it's like an hour and a half for the first one because it was so that mission's just fucking bullshit. At one point, it's one specific part for that first mission too, where, where you're at the drop ships and they just keep keep coming in waves and it's fucking annoying. There was a while there where I was playing it and I'm like. Are these infinite respawns? Yeah, it's bullshit. And eventually they would end, but man, they there was it's like a fucking clown car of horseshit. Yeah, because in Halo Two, normally there's there's a little less enemies, but not that part, not that little area. It's a fucking clown car. <laughs> it is. It's like the clown car from like Saints Row. <laughs> but yeah, Halo Two uh, second mission is a very good skip through the level, which is kind of intentional because there's a skull there, but it's really handy and it, it skips. The most annoying parts were the sniper jackals, which I love. Everybody loves the sniper jackals. Mm -hmm. Have you managed to figure out how to uh, kill a uh, hunter in one hit? I know I showed you that when we were. Um, oh yeah, I did. You not can do it in other Halos. Yeah, I've done did. it in in. Um, I think I know I did it in three. I'm pretty sure I did it in two in one point, but I, good luck doing that on legendary. No way, I don't believe you. I, I mean, I can go and try it again. You. Yeah, you have to show me because I, 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 I don't believe you there because I feel like they beefed them up a lot since. After one, that you can't one shot him. Like, of course, you can still get a lot of damage on him, but one shotting on Legendary sounds really extreme for later games. I want to say, Vice and I were talking earlier when I was playing Resident Evil 8, and he mentioned that he's playing, I believe, the newest Call of Duty, Call of Duty World, World uh, Cold, Cold War. War. Yeah. Black yeah. Ops Cold War. And uh, what was your. Yeah, where you don't shoot each other, you just kind of. What? What? Wesker? <laughs> you just nuke each other, or not actually. Uh, what, Wesker? Did you? What was your? Would you like to relay your comment on the campaign? The Megan? campaign. First of all, the campaign is surprisingly uh, good aesthetically. Like the first real mission takes place in fucking Vietnam, and it really like is really really cool. Yeah. But the difficulty is it makes me feel old because I'm playing on the hardest difficulty and I'm sleeping through the entire fucking game. There's no challenge at all. It is. It, it's pathetic. In all honesty, it's super pathetic. I'm like, it's hard this, to imagine. This is what uh, this is what people have been talking about. I played um, all this time. Call of Duty's one and two on the hardest difficulty, and that was a fucking nightmare. It is sad how not difficult this is. It's, although right now, like the first couple missions aside, have been stealth missions. But you know, you can see the gears turning behind the scenes. Like they're not gonna let you have a full stealth mission, so it always winds up with you getting a firefight at the end. Yeah. Because we know that it the escalates. fucking Mountain Dew chugging uh, gamers fucking people, really need their gamers to... really need to have their fucking major shootout. Yeah. Remember that badass like still color mute uh, level in COD Four that was like all stealth. And it was fucking badass. But uh, uh, I, one thing I do like, you know how fucking Call of Duty has their little deal with Mountain Dew and Doritos? Yeah. 
Yeah. They have their Mountain Dew and Doritos are all over this game, but since it's in the Cold War and takes place in the eighties, they use the fucking eighties logos. <laughs> and I, I just found that to actually be kind of funny. It's goofy as fuck. Yeah, but yeah, but Vice, I I I just wanna let you know that if you want a hard fucking first person shooter campaign, look no further than the Halo series on Legendary. Halo and two specifically. I, I don't no, care no, much for not Halo two, because that's just straight up unfair. I don't play games for difficulty. The only reason I want to play Cold War on hardest difficulty is because anything less would be completely unengaging. Well, if that's the case, you should play Ninja Gaiden. Yeah, because that game isn't hard, you know? It should yeah, be, uh... it's, it's fucking easy if you know what you're doing. Yeah. Gay Robot, are you still going to play Ghosts and Goblins? I don't know. You know I was watching I'll... Vine Sauce Joel stream that, and it seems to have the same problem that I had with fucking Castlevania, that where it, like, it looks boring as shit because it's slow and it's really fucking. I think like, it's a bit clunky, panicky. but that's just me. Oh no, it yeah. picks up. Like you just gotta like spam the shit out of that button <laughs> and actually control your your uh, jump trajectory. Is this Mega Man? I don't know. I, it, I might just stream it. Very Mega know. Man. If you uh, if you can kind of you, you can control the flow of the game. You know, you just gotta spray and pray a little bit. You know what, Gero? But I think that might be one that I'll just let you have if you can pull it off for me because. I don't know if I want to play that game. You know, I might let you have Ninja Gaiden as well, like the first game. He puts it out. Well, well, I want you to feel good about yourself, man. I mean, I'm, I'm oh, gonna okay. play through the whole thing and say it was pretty cool. <laughs> Not have anything bad to say about it because I probably blocked it out. You also played it with save states. Let's see. I, you, you did. No, you well, did. Well, you get you game over. You just, no, you uh, said no. We were talking about you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, me, I would never play with safe states. <laughs> you literally admitted to it. Yeah, before we, uh, Ghosts and Goblins. Oh no, I was talking about uh, Super Ghouls and Ghosts uh, from oh. Super Nintendo. Oh, you're talking about Gooblers and Gookies, okay? Yeah, that game's way harder than Ghosts and Goblins, and it's, it's stupid. <laughs> like, and it's dumb, like, fuck, retarded. Yeah. People call it like a puzzle platformer because <laughs> you, you just have to. Oh, you got to play it a certain way, oh, otherwise you'll fuck die. Off. Fuck off with that. Fuck off. No. It's. I mean, you got you got to experience it firsthand. Uh, what Super Ghouls and Ghosts will will do because the terrain will change. Uh, the fucking the insta pits will just come out of nowhere. You get touched, you just you know you're careening towards them, and it's scary. It's a very oh, spooky no. game. I may play that, or I may just replay some of the I want to be the guy games because I played those in the past and they were fucking annoying. Yeah, Vice played a lot of that. Did you ever beat any of them? I uh, was going to mention that. I was going to say my favorite Castlevania ga- game is I Want to Be the Guy. Yeah, that's fair enough. And I've only played the original, and I technically beat it, but I did cheat once. Oh, okay. Because I, I couldn't beat the Wily boss fight, and I just got sick of trying. So the ones I, uh, I played were like the movie, the video game, and then Gaiden. Yeah, I've only played I Want to Be the Guy, the movie, the game. That was That was my high school experience. An experience it was, Jesus. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a game that uh, I think everyone should at least play once, even if you're not going to beat it. Even if you don't want to actually get through the whole thing, you should at least get through to the Mike Tyson fight because that's before the game gets completely bullshit. Sounds like that one Bobo game I played on Newgrounds. Because there's just like nothing comparable to I Want to Be the Guy. It is it is a unique experience, and it will it will change your life. It will, unironically. Guaranteed for better or worse. I think I probably for worse. I think I have the name of this episode. Oh yeah, what will it be? The robot loses his mind over Ninja Gaiden. I mean, you wouldn't be wrong. God, that was fucking bullshit. That fucking. Never mind. I'm gonna get back onto it if I keep thinking about it. You were going off for like I don't know over ten minutes. It's like you gotta know what you gotta know what you have you need to do on those last few levels, or you're never gonna get past it. You gotta know it. it by heart. You gotta be able to recite it like it's in fucking military code. And you will be able to recite it if you actually beat the game, because you'll have seen those screens a lot, because you'll have died a lot. Trial by fire. I, I don't know how the 3D games are gonna compare, but I will definitely l- let uh, people know. I'm really curious because you know, like I'm probably gonna play that that game for a little footage. Probably not gonna beat it, but it's for a bit of footage. I think it's a wrap. Thank you for joining us and listening to the Wesker Osti podcast. I've been Wesker Punch. I've been Wesker Punch too, actually. Yeah, I'm Brandon. <laughs> Shut up. Later, losers. Smell you later, baked potatoes. Peace. Eighteen naked cowboys at Ram Ram. We off? Are we off? No.
Can I start dropping M-bombs again?